computer, lights. Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. So today, it looks like Pepper is out because he's got a fever. He's running. So since he's running a fever, how could he run a show? I think I'm funny. I really do. So instead, we're going to have Colton here today, but he went to go get coffee. So he'll join us in a minute or two. So uh, I posted out to Facebook about the fact that uh, I was up all night working on a picture that just wouldn't leave me alone. And I kind of want to work on that today. I know it's Watercolor Wednesday, but I don't, right now I'm not working on anything Bellatrix Rising. So I'm thinking of doing something with this picture that's Bellatrix Rising esque. So and that's my battle plan for today. I know that we probably are going to try to do something watercolor E. And originally I was going to do all of this and then print it and then paint it with watercolors, but it looks kind of cool the way it was. And so I was kind of like, well, sometimes you just don't end up doing what you expected to do. Anyway, okay, so. I am going to go on ahead and switch monitors over here so you guys can see what's going on on the monitor. So the original picture was not, in fact, in black and white. It was in color, but I've been kind of working on it here. And I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all of the tags on this and we're going to work on that um, without the tags. We're going to apparently screw stuff up. We don't want to screw stuff up. So we're going to kind of do this here. Still waiting for... Um, waiting for... Uh, what's his name? Whoever he is. He better not lie to me because he's a friend of mine. I'll figure it out. But, you know, I could do this this way or I could do this the easy way. And I think I'll do this the easy way. Let's open the original clip file, which is, like, really difficult to find, apparently. Open the original clip file. Okay. This is probably better because then I can just go ahead and kill everything that's in here that is making commentary. All right? Because these are all the lines pointing to the different things. So we have just the picture which is the way it should be. And that is the way it shall be. We don't have music. We need music. How can a show happen without music? Right? Do 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 You know, getting some music going for us. All right. Now, on this one, I've got a number of layers. So really what I'm going to do is turn off the paper. 
go to this layer and then just hit Control Shift E. And that's going to merge all of the artwork together into one spot. Because really, this guy is all I want to keep on this. And so we want to transfer. No, we need to change canvas size. And what we're about to do here is we're going to make this into a graphic that my characters can talk about. Okay, now we've done that. Let's go through and delete all of the previous. There. So now we have just the picture. So I'm going to then take this guy, do tonal correction. The reverse gradient is the uh, way that you do invert in Clip Studio Paint. Now, I made a version right here that's black and white. And the black and white's kind of cool. But kind of thinking about this in a different way, and I'm wondering whether we shouldn't just leave it in color. But one of the things we do have to do is go in here and make the star a star again, because now it's an inverted star, inverted star. All right, so we will revert it. And we need to flip the planets. But I was looking at the artwork before, and the planets were inverted. I'm telling Colton to go on ahead and join when he can. We'll see when he joins. There we go. And I'll just keep an eye up over here and make sure that I don't have anything pops up there. See what happens. Okay, looking in here, I'm looking at this going, ah oh, man, behold, the planets, they are inverted. But not only that, they suck. So <laughs> we're going to flip the planets because they need to be, of course, the shadow side up. We're going to do that. Shadow here. We're just going to give the impression that this goes through here and then comes out the other side and Colton is here. Colton is here. Hello, Colton. Oh, Colton is muted. Mute, mute, mute. You're muted. Let me switch back to camera mode so that he can see me. I have to find my mouse. There we go. I can't hear you. Now I can kind of hear you. You're very quiet. There we go. Maybe I need to turn my music down a little. Oh. And that is at Winamp. I still use Winamp. Nice. I'll probably use Winamp till the day I die. <laughs> no, no one will stop me from using Winamp. All right. There we go. Now I can hear you and <laughs> see you. Yay. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. I uh, 
I ended up staying up way too late last night drawing a thing. Oh, what'd you draw? I drew this. Uh, well, so I've been I've been wanting to do kind of you know how they do the uh, omake in comics or manga where they do the little like SD characters explaining some technology or some oh, aspect yeah, the little of the TV guys with like yeah, little yeah, TV guys like do little, that. Do the thing, yeah, right. And and they they do that because it's a you know some of the technology is really complicated and off putting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like really kind of rough whenever people are like, I don't understand what they were talking about. So they do the little chibi guys because they're cute. And yeah. they'll have them say things like, remember, when we're three times the Swartz tiled radius of the planet, blah, 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 blah. And don't try to surf there, you know, or something else to be cute. So that it, it kind of disarms it a little. Right, <laughs> so right, it's not, right. So, well, um, I've been trying to kind of figure out how my warp drive works in my comics. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't want to use warp drive, um, you know, because that's Star Trek. So I, I'm working on my own little version of it. And I, you know, one of the best things to do is make sure that it's internally consistent. So okay. what are the rules that screw up your warp drive so that you can have drama? <laughs> and that's, that's kind of really what I'm after is, you know, what can I. So I went on ahead and last night I just kind of had this idea about like expanding the radius of gravity when you're in okay. this, when you're in the warp space, so to speak. So I was making a joke about Schwarzschild radius. Schwarzschild radius is the radius where gravity is so dense that light falls back down. Every every gravatic body has it. It's just that the Earth's is like this big, right okay. in the dead center of the planet. Oh. When that radius expands past the surface then you have a black hole, hmm. right? The The sun's is like three kilometers wide. So, but it's in the dead center. <laughs> so, you know, That's you cool. never see it because it's in the middle of the sun. Right. So my thought was, well, I know what, you know, the faster you go in warp space, the more those, you get this distortion of that radius. Oh. So like if you go too fast, then the radius on earth will expand past earth. And when it does, you get sucked into a black hole just by flying by a planet. Uh. It's just that there isn't really a black hole there. So what happens is your ship just explodes and falls apart. But that's why you can't fly in solar systems. Because it's okay. just a whole bunch of gravity wells all of right. a sudden that are super exaggerated. And so, you you know, you're flying through there trying not to hit one of them because it's effectively like running into the event horizon of a black hole. Right, right. Even though it's not really. So I did an illustration to illustrate that. Um, and I couldn't sleep until I finished it. So I was up until two in the morning drawing this thing. Because I'm like, yeah. I can't sleep. I have to finish this. So this morning I'm fixing it up. And now I'm going to put little chibi characters explaining all this stuff. Because it's really complicated. Nice. Yeah, no, I, I got home at like 1230. Because I work until m midnight Ugh. from work. And then um, got home, sat down, started to watch like some of the videos for my class, for one of my classes, my 3D modeling class. I'm just in here watching them. And next thing you notice, I opened up my eyes because I fell asleep in this chair. And it was uh, 1.30. I was like, I'm just going to move up to my bedroom. Is it time to go to bed now? <laughs> and I was like, I didn't realize I was that tired. I should really go to bed. <laughs> We're not spring chickens anymore. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I, I did the same thing you did. I went back to college in my 30s, and that was a markedly different experience. I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, we've we mentioned it. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about it. Yeah, it was, I was, uh, right as soon as your uh, um, your stream was ending, you're like, oh, Colin, I'm, I want to ask you about this. How's your right. experience going in at 30? And I was like, oh, and we kind of started touching on it, but didn't really go that far into it. Yeah, the, I, I was, uh, I was what I was, I think I was exactly 30 when I went back to college. Yep. Um, cause it was, it was 2002 and I, I was born in 72. So that makes total sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that was, and it was, you were saying something about, you know, all the kids around you are like, let's drink and get drunk. And you're like, really? No, I got, I, we got homework to do, bro. <laughs> there is a there is a thing with that though where everybody like it's actually kind of funny because uh monday 
I decided my teacher sent out an um a thing of like, hey, if you guys want to join, I meet with this group of guys ever or just not guys, it was just a group of artists on Discord. And they do like kind of like a live draw. They all sit in Zoom, so everybody has their cameras on and they just sit there and draw and do like little studies. That's cool. And yeah, it was I was like, oh that's a cool thing. Yeah, hey. And I actually finally had this Monday was available at that time because it's also like late at night it like starts at seven right so that's really late well okay so these guys are like from all over the united states sure but like I'm, seven I'm o'clock joking. for us I'm, I, yeah i'm just like the the older i get the more seven is really late <laughs> but yeah like uh seven o'clock the reason why i say it's pretty late is because uh they get done at 10 o'clock I was going to say, it takes two hours or something like that. It's not yeah, like, so like over one. From seven minute. to, so it's technically six o'clock to 10 Pacific time. So that's California time because most of them are in California. And so that literally like didn't realize we were going from seven till 11 o'clock our time. And I'm just right. like, oh my God. And then finally one person spoke. I was like, I'm really tired. And I was like, wait, I remember our conversations. You're somewhere on the East Coast. Right. It's like, three o'clock in the morning for you right now why the heck are you awake <laughs> every so often on this show uh i will get somebody from overseas uh early on last year i had I like a, a young lady who was in the uk mm -hmm. who visited she was she was like a high school girl or whatever she was doing her high school work oh cool yeah and she'd sit and watch the show while she did her work and it was really cool but i kept thinking about like what time is it there? <laughs> and then we got a couple of Koreans who dropped in. Yep. And I'm like, now see Korea, I know because they're one time zone over from Japan. Yep. And I have Japan always in my sis tray because I've called Japan all the time. So yeah. I'm you like, friends and I looked over there and I'm like, it's 3 a.m. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you? They're like, eh, we're watching this show. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> we're okay. No, I I used to do that when I was uh, when I worked graveyards uh, last year. Yeah. I would always randomly be jumping into people's streams at our hours, our weird hours of like three a.m. Yeah. to like eight a.m. And um, sometimes even some of my friends would be like, "I'm playing video games," and I'll be sitting there at work talking to them on their stream, and they're just like, "Colton, what are you doing?" And I was like, "I work graveyards." They're like, "Oh yeah." I'm like, "What are you doing?" And they're like, right. "What do you mean?" I'm like, "It's almost six a.m." And they're like. Oh no, I see the sun rising right now. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> right. Let me find a stopping point for this stream. I was like, you guys are nuts. Like, me makes sense. I have to make right. money. You, why are you awake? <laughs> right. It's but. it's funny because like that's the that was the thing that I remember the most from returning to college was all the kids were always like beaten, exhausted in the morning. And I'm like, I'm getting good at already sleeping six hours, so I don't know what your problem is. You know? Yeah, I had been in the workforce for a decade at that point in time, so yeah. I was like, meh, meh, meh. I know, I, f I feel the same way with that part, though. Like, But also, like, I've had so much more experience than most of these kids have yet. And well, that's, that's that the other thing. That throws me off a little bit. I was like, I did not realize it. Back when I started college, back in 09, when I first yeah. went in community college. And there was a guy in his, I would say, 40s, like early mm -hmm. 40s, late 30s, in our class that did uh, apparently, because we had to do like a presentation of, oh, this is what we've done in our, or what we've achieved kind of mm -hmm. thing as and i and you're like i achieved eating a hundred tacos at taco bell <laughs> at the time i thought i did quite a few different things right apparently i did not do what i thought i did because the guy now like at that time on because we had to do it in a presentation of a web page and using flash back when flash was a thing yeah <laughs> it wasn't banned yeah That's... back before it was banned and also too back before they took flash and called it now adobe animate Right. But um, I was in that class, and this guy throws up this uh, his website, and he's like, I don't care if any of you believe me, but this, but this is actually true. He's like, 
those two book covers right there are Stephen King book covers. And I actually did both of those back when I worked for this publishing company. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? I was like, right. This guy's pulling my leg. <laughs> and even the teacher kind of was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's an actual story to this and I want to hear it. <laughs> And he tells us the story of like this type Stephen like they're like, hey, we need book covers for this. Here's the title. Give us some book cover ideas. He's like, okay. They didn't even tell him who it was for. What it was, it was like, here's the title. This is the book cover. Give us some ideas. Him and his group of art art guys he worked with, whatever, designers, they all threw him up there. And next thing you know, Stephen King walks in the door. He has two Bud Lights apparently in his pockets. He used to wear car he'll always wear cargo pants. He put two Bud Lights in his pocket. And then he was walking up, pulled out a Bud Light, popped it open, threw the cap in the trash can, took a drink. He's like, I like that one and that one, and just walked away. And I was like, Yeah, that's the story. Like He's like, That's the story. <laughs> well, and that sounds like Stephen King, too. Yeah. <laughs> And that I was sounds like, just like what he would do. Uh, I was just sitting there, and next thing, and like he's like, "Yep, that's it." And I was like, "I got a question." He's like, "What?" I was like, "Did he ever touch the second Bud Light?" Because I'm really curious now. He just has these two. I'm just imagining a guy with like two glass bottles in his pockets, just wandering around. I was like, "Why would you not like?" I don't. Doesn't make sense why you'd carry glass in your pocket like that. But. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. No, there was a few of them. Like they did a few things. Like I think mine was, I started working in comics, or at least creating my own comics, mm -hmm. my own stories at that time, and I at least had like one or two ideas that I was going for, and I was like, oh, I have this idea for like, oh, I remember one of them. It was called Battle Chess, and there was a game called Battle Chess. I liked it. Yeah. Kind of that, yeah, it was so, it was the whole concept of the story for this one. I just could never really figure out a good story for it. I never right. really played off it, but the whole concept was like these nations or uh, higher beings, let's just say, um, play a game of chess every sure. time. And the way that they do chess is they take all these different beings and creatures and people and use them as their chess pieces but instead of your atypical regular chess of like oh king to a5 blah 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 when you're finally like king take rook the king and the rook actually fight it out and then mm -hmm. whoever actually wins that was the little twist for us like whoever actually wins in this fight actually takes the piece or takes the spot so instead of actually like oh i can always be like pawn take pawn i can go pawn take pawn but if my pawn loses in that fight well it was just a waste of my move you know that could be an interesting twist on magic yeah stuff like that you know now i'm thinking about it, i'm like wouldn't that be kind of a cool twist on magic if you they, they make these micro magic cards now mm-hmm they're like tiny sized. The idea is to put it in your pocket and carry it with you everywhere, but they're really, really small. That's weird. and now I'm like, wouldn't that be kind of wicked? That would if, be cool. If you had like magic cards out there and and you know, you know, it's your weenies are in the front, so they're all one ones, right? Yeah. And everybody in the back has ranking things, and you have like, I don't know, maybe uh um uh come on, what's Chandra and Jace? They are those oh, parts. Uh, um, whatever they are that, that act like you, yeah, like you the king and the queen, the um, planeswalkers, planeswalkers. Golly, there we go. I was like, I know this name, I play magic. I know bit. it's uh, right, we both play magic. This is not like something that we, oh well, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but no, like, yeah, I, I actually, so I stopped playing magic when the planeswalkers first came out. Like right when they came me. out, I just stopped because I had no one to play with. I was like, oh, this is boring. Like, I'm tired. Like, I, I think I that really, we've been making jokes about this. I think what's going to end up happening is we're all going to be in nursing homes playing magic. I am totally, I am okay with this. Yeah, I know. Me too. I mean, it's like, but I think that's, this is our generation's bridge. Yeah. Poker. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's funny how, like, with, within that same uh, state, though, like, Every generation has its card game. Yeah. 
you had Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. in the end, I personally do think this is actually kind of funny and how it works. But in the end, once they kind of get a taste of tar card games of all of our generations, they always somehow end up at Magic the Gathering. It's and well, I just and think it's, Magic the Gathering. It's just it's bigger, but it's also it's more of an adult card game. Of it, yeah. So people actually more go towards it because, especially once they get to like I'd say a certain age, they're like, "Oh, let's try this now." And I th also I just think it's more just the community wise and everything is way different than what they're used to. But it's mm -hmm. actually it's more mature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though, literally, like you kind of look at it, it, they're all kind of the same game. They just have like two, three different sets of rules, right? They're kind of well, all—they're all a little similar. Yeah, they, I mean, it's all like kind of the same. Um, but yeah, I—I've I, also thought about you know, like we talk about all of our every generations because you're a micro generation below me or whatever. You're a yeah, millennial. I'm not that far off, Xer, right? Yeah. And we're not that far off, but you're not Gen Z, which is what my kid is. And, oh, yeah, no. And Gen Z is like, they're already, I'm watching him, my niece, they're already breaking off into this own little universe that's their own. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and, and there's always bleed over. Like, oh, I yeah. know that you probably also watch uh, game videos, game theory videos and stuff like that that's more yours and their generation. Mm -hmm. But like he will sit there for six, seven hours and watch people play games. And as a Gen Xer, I'm like, why don't you just play the game? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like, I'm in the same boat with that part though. Like I will, I do watch people sometimes play games, but sure. it's usually, I use them as background noise. I don't it's actually, I, I won't sit the there the and TV watch for. it. Yeah. I it's mean, I turn the me, TV like, on and just leave it on like some random channel when it was rolling through sitcoms at night or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I used to draw. I'd sit in front of the TV and just draw and just go through pads of paper. And that's why now it's like they'll, some sitcom will show up and it'll be like, oh, yeah, that's Dharma and Greg. Or that's, you know, that's like, I know all these sitcoms. How do you know all these sitcoms? Spent literally hundreds of hours. <laughs> drawing with not fully deal. paying attention but enough no. attention to actually know what i'm watching <laughs> yeah but enough to know who the characters are what their yeah. relationship is what they're doing what's mm -hmm. the story what's the plot you know oh yeah but it's the same thing I, but he doesn't he's concentrating like this is the center of his world is trying to figure yeah, out that's what i was about to ask is he concentrating but like for yeah me, he's like... concentrating on these and i'm like now that i don't get and it's okay. I mean, every generation is going to have that. My grandparents never understood why I had to sit and watch TV. They concentrated on the TV show. So they'd turn the TV on, watch Jeopardy, say all the answers, and then turn the TV off. Yeah. You know? Whereas me, I'm turning the TV on. I don't care what the answers are. I'm drawing, man. I got work to do. You know. Yeah. No, My I've, grandparents I've... had a bar that faced the living room. So, like, you know, well, it was uh, the the – the kitchen and the living room were sort of a shared space with a bar. Oh, yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. So they had bar stools and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I loved, I'd get up on the bar stools and I'd put my papers out there and it faced the TV so they could watch whatever they wanted. And I'd sit there and draw. And I, I just love that. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. It's like a thing that I remember, you know, it's like one of those things you remember, you know, this is the eighties watching Alex Trebek with a mustache and, you know, <laughs> back in the days, right. Wheel of fortune. And, those were on at night, and that was the thing. Yeah, so. no, I remember. I remember sitting down and watching Wheel of Fortune and stuff like that with my grandmother because she yeah. was big on the like, I, like it's a generational thing. Like they were big on game shows. Yeah, and like they're fun to watch. Or uh, actually, I think that's when I got into like more of the fantasy old school shows of like. Oh, hold on. When you use your phone for your camera and someone decides to call you, that's a telemarketer. Like, I was like, uh oh, who was that? Hope <laughs> it sure wasn't important. important. Yeah, no, I was just making sure it didn't it wasn't like my boss going, Hey, we're uh we're we're starting early today. Oh, okay. Hey, um We need help. Yeah, usually that's what I get the phone call for. 
Um, but no, like uh, Beastmaster and Xena mm -hmm. and those, like that's when I finally actually like realized, I'm like, there's some really interesting stuff on TV. Great. And those are the things I used to watch with my yeah. grandma. Like that was actually one thing I always liked being over at my grandmother's because she actually would sit down and watch those. But that was also, I think, part of a generational thing as well. It was. Like those those are the TV shows of their era. And I was like, these are awesome. Like this woman's a badass. Did you just see her throw that thing? Oh yeah. <laughs> What's so funny is you're talking about your grandparents roughly the same generation as my mom. Yeah. And that's so weird to think about. That. You know what I mean? Because it's it's yeah. it's natural. There's nothing weird or wrong about it unless you think about it. Because I'm like, my mom would watch Hercules and Xena and stuff like that. Yeah. But my grandparents are like, I got nothing. But my grand my, my grandfather fought in World War II. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I that's that's where we are in generation yep. point. You know, it's like yeah. my grandpa and grand both my grandparents actually, because my uh my grandmother was stationed with my grandfather in Seattle and she was a photographer. So she was oh. like a war correspondent photographer. Oh, that's cool. And so, I mean, it's like, you know, but that was 1941, you know, mm -hmm. that's where they were. That's what they were young and everything. And, you know, my grandpa passed away in 89. My grandmother was 95. You know what I mean? That was my, that was my year. Right? That was when you were born. <laughs> But I mean, case in point, yeah. In 1988, I'm sitting there with my grandpa and my grandma watching TV, and that at that time I was what 14, mm -hmm. you know, so 16, 16 years old at that point. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, so I by then I, I was old enough to already be drawing. I've already had the pads of paper out, had you know, I was ready to go. They'd let oh, me I watch Speed Racer, and they'd let me watch Battle of the Planets, and they'd let me watch Robotech there nice. at the bar. So I could draw. So that's actually how I got into the first, my first drawings was Rocket watching. Boy. Was it Rocket Boy? No. What's his name? What? what? I'm trying to remember the one with the little robot kid with the Astro red Boy. Boots. Astro Boy. There we go. Yep. Tetsuan Atomu. Yeah. That's the name of it in Japanese, um, which is Iron Atom. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So anyway, but yeah, it's uh, that's how I got started. Was nice. because of that sitting at the bar there with a pad of paper and you know, pencils and things like that, and then they would let me watch Speed Racer while they read a book, and they that's were perfectly so content. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm I mean, that's also a five, man. thing too, though. Like before, I know uh, I didn't meet my great grandfather, and they were like the TV thing was uh, still. A semi thing, but most of the time they would rather read a book than watch television. Sure, but yeah, yeah that's yeah. it's generational. It's it is generational. Like... I also think it's somewhat full circle, um, because now I'm kind of I like reading a book at night when I go mm -hmm. to bed yeah. because I was looking at my phone, and I think that that was keeping me awake all night because of the blue light and stuff like that. So now I actually. I installed a light that mounts on my wall so that it doesn't shine into my wife's eyes so she can sleep. And then I can read my book and the light just hits my book and I can get an actual real book. And that's what I've been doing. Nice. And I've been reading a lot of real books and I read for about 30 minutes and I go straight to sleep and it's great. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah, before read... I'd be like surfing Reddit until five yeah. in the morning. I read a lot of comics now more than web comics. Well, imagine that. But in a book form yeah right well i mean well, like I, like everywhere they're right here <laughs> no i know i'm right there with you <laughs> we've got them everywhere but like i uh, i literally like i stopped reading for a while but like recently like as like you said like i kind of i'll sit down and read like a few few pages of a comic while i'm trying to fall asleep or whatnot and just be yeah. like all right cool it's time for bed yeah i burn through comics still a little too fast i do too I can read Tonkabons, but and I but it's still half of a Tonkabon a night, you know. But I, yeah, that's 150 pages, so I go through about 150 pages a night of comics. So that's a lot of 32 yeah. page comics. Like I got into the whole webtoons thing because there's Ooh, some actually webtoons interesting is dangerous. Stories. 
Yeah, I just been like randomly finding them. Like, oh, this is cool. And next thing you know, some down a rabbit hole for this comic that apparently has 150 chapters out right now. I'm like, oh, sweet. Right. I'm yeah, never yeah. gonna catch up. And next thing you know, it's like three days later. Fake. You have to wait till one more week from now. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> well, and that or, was something that I. Uh, they're on hiatus, and that part right. always annoys me. I'm like, oh, like I understand you guys are on a break, and I totally get it, but. I'm really invested in these characters right now. Why can't you come back? <laughs> well, and there's a, that's a good question for those of us that do this kind of work. I mean, I try to put breaks in every issue. Mm -hmm. But I think with Bellatrix Rising, I'm going to have three issues for the most, traditionally three issues per episode. Yeah. But so, what do you consider a break, though? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the question is, like, how long do I take off? I don't want to take off for a year. Yeah. Because I've got 53, oh, 53 issues planned so far for Bellatrix Rising. Mm -hmm. And so 53 issues, if it takes me a freaking week every page, <laughs> you know, that's, that's like 30 years. <laughs> right. Yeah. There. So it's like, meh. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if that's a, a viable option. Um, we'll have to see. I got, when I was drawing Tamerlan, I got to the point where I could do a page a day. Okay. Um, not it, it's not bad. It really wasn't. And that was with school. The good yeah. news, because I was teaching at that time, I was teaching uh, at the junior high. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is, they didn't want me to do any planning, class planning or anything like that. And they were perfectly content if I just sat there with my little tablet at my desk all day long. And then wow. I would draw and then they would say, OK, it's time for, you know, two, two or it's time for one, two or whatever. And I grab my appropriate first grade, second grade or third grade English book and tootle upstairs to the class and be in the oh, class. You were in Japan, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, it, yeah. That's weird because see that part always is kind of weird for me thinking about it like the whole exchange program for going over there being an English teacher yeah because I know there's a lot of them that just are like oh, okay you're here like they from what I've been I heard from experience like a lot of teachers are like all right no like they don't think you're gonna really put in that much effort into the job for sure some other, because there's a lot of people that just go there for a year and just disappear right. Like right. when they come um, back because like, oh, I did my year vacation. I'm out. <laughs> and they paid me for it. That's great. Yeah. Which I'm um, like, eh, but cool. it depends on where you are. Like oh, really? my wife was at a school where they were like, We don't have an English program, so you're it. Merry Christmas. Oh, so she was and so she got to run everything. Oh, that's kind of because cool. they had no idea. She was in an elementary and mm -hmm. When we were there, they had just moved English down into elementary, and oh. that particular school was annoyed by it, and so they didn't bother to do anything about it, and then all of a sudden it was mandated by the state, and yada, 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 and so they're like, uh, well, we've got an ALT, so I'll just put it all on her, and so uh, she was in charge of everything, and that was kind of cool. That is um, cool. For me, I was in a junior high, and the junior highs already had been teaching English for 20 years, 30 years or whatever. And they had even been teaching English with ALTs, which is what we were called, which is a yeah. language teacher. Um, we, they've been teaching with us for 15 or so. So, I mean, you know, many, all the kids were adjusted and acclimated to ALTs and stuff like that. And they had us going to the kindergartens so that the kindergartners would get adjusted to the foreigners and stuff like that. And it was, you know, it was, but, they so didn't it's not want throwing them off lesson like, plans. who's this person? <laughs> right. They didn't want us doing the lesson plans. And that made some sense because the lesson plans were absolutely, just like anything in Japan, the lesson plans were absolutely rigid. Mm -hmm. There was no flexibility. That said, my second year teacher was fresh out of college and he was all full of vim and vinegar and he really wanted to shake it up and change everything. And so he and I actually started developing different games and stuff like that. And it was actually a lot of fun. That is um, cool. He, he really was like totally, he, he grew up, all of his schools that he had gone to had ALTs. 
And so the moment he saw me, he's like, awesome. You're my ALT. Okay, let's get to work on this. And da, 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 da. And he was like, I oh, mean, so like, he's actually from Japan. Yeah, he, all of them were Japanese, but oh, okay. But I wasn't was sure like, if they like had like two. I guess no, two no, ALTs. Was, you have to have a J, you have to have a JLT in the beginning. You have to have the the, the lead is always Japanese, and then right. we were the we were the assistant, which that's fine. It didn't bother me. Um, it's how but, their system works. I understand it. It's how their system works. But you know, it's it's cool. But yeah, it was he, boy. As soon as he took one look at me, and he's like, "Are you ready to get to work?" And I'm like. Wow, that's very direct. I have not experienced that from a lot of Japanese people. And he's like, "Don't worry about it. I've been studying a lot." And he was so excited that you know he's like, "I can be absolutely direct with you." <laughs> I love so it. Uh, yeah, so I kind of missed the guy. I lost track of him because we both moved at the same time. Oh, okay. and we didn't know where we were moving, and so we couldn't mail each other the addresses. <laughs> so I've lost touch with him. Oh. I, I miss him though, because I I'd love to chat and see where he's where he is today. I mean, it's been where he's eleven years, up. so mm -hmm. yeah, twelve years now. So I'd be I'd be curious to see where he landed. Oh, so wait, have you been out of Japan for twelve years now? I have. Wow, that's that crazy. Just started coming up on my memories on Facebook was like, you know, this is the last picture I'm taking in Japan. And I'm like, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember you showed me some of those pictures of you in Japan, and I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, "Oh yeah. my god, these are really awesome!" Like, because you weren't like in like you were kind of more suburban Japan. I was right? totally out in the boonies. Yeah, you weren't actually in like the city. You were actually more in like the really cool like boonies, like mm -hmm. older houses, really nice look. Like it just looked really cool, and I was it like, really oh, was. Was "I'm kind of like... jealous because I was, I never made it out that far when I went to Japan to go see it." I mean, yeah. I kind of did on by train. Right. When you're like taking the train everywhere, you can see it outside the windows. You're like, oh, hey, that's cool. Hey, look at that house. But like, that's also at 200 miles per hour. <laughs> All right. So you can't really like, hold on, wait, come back. <laughs> what what house? Um, yeah, I, I lived in a uh, I lived in a town called Iwai, which is about it was about 50 kilometers out of Tokyo. Um, but it was also like another 10 or 15 you, kilometers. You said UI? EY. Yeah. I W A I. I W A I. Yeah. I think it's now called Bondo, but that's all right. If you can find it on Google. There but, is a thing called a wide Japanese whiskey. <laughs> yes. They were fa famous for their whiskey. Oh, yeah. It's Bondo. Yeah. It's Bondo. Bondo she, which took everything. Sashima. And that was kind of a bummer because mm -hmm. Sashima is part of uh, Bondo. Um, but it's up in the Ibaraki and um, there's no oh, that's trains kinda, out there. That's kind of close to their airport, isn't it? Narita? Yeah. No. Or is Narita more? Oh, Narita is way down. So way down there. It's in okay. Chiba. Narita is in Chiba Prefecture. Oh, okay. 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 Never mind. I was up in, no, I was up near Tsukuba, which is Science City. Um, um uh, but, oh, scuba, yeah. Yeah. And it, and my wife was in Moria, which is down closer to the river, Tonagawa. Um, if you go down so oh, okay. head east and south, you'll see mm -hmm. Moria. Yep, I see it. And so she was in Moria and I was in Bondo, and there were no trains to Bondo. So they gave me a car. Oh. So I actually drove a little K car with yellow plates. It was awesome. Oh, the yeah, car had a 600 cc engine. Cars. It yeah. was beautiful. It was the coolest car I had ever had. Um, and and it was just like such a ridiculous vehicle. Because <laughs> the K cars have to fit in a box 11 feet by 5 feet by 6 feet. That's the box it has to fit in what? for it to be a K car. And it has to have a 600 cc engine or smaller. Wow. So a 0 0.6 liter engine. <laughs> That's awesome. It was beautiful. Best little car ever. I swear. Mm -hmm. It was just insane. And and if you look at like pictures of Japan, you'll see those little like boxy black or white or gray. Like, you know, they're just a box with sort of a little bump on the front. They kind of look like a minivan shrink ray. Yeah. That's, that's what I had was one of yeah. those. I, I remember seeing a few of them in Tokyo when we were walking around. It's very rare you see them, but I saw a few. Yeah, people don't usually drive into Tokyo for a reason. Yeah. 
But, you know, it's like I never drove into Tokyo. I would drive to my wife's apartment, park behind her apartment, and then we'd walk to the train station because she was right by Inatoy oh, train yeah. station. Well, so, and the train station to get into Tokyo from there isn't that bad. Oh, yeah, because then we take the – it was the Joso. We take the Joso line to Moria Station, and then we take the TX, and that was a high-speed train. Oh, yeah. The, the TX goes from right. Akihabara all the way up to Tsukuba. Huh? So we'd the, one of the stops is Moria, and we'd hop on right there and then just go straight to Akihabara. Oh, that's cool. And then we were right in the middle of Electric City, and that's where we wanted to go just most of the time. Anyway. So, I mean, really. So yeah. we'd hop out of Electric City. And then we, yeah, you know, if we needed to, at that point, you could juncture to the Yamanote, which is the, the light green line that goes all the way around. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And though the Yamanote comes every seven minutes, so yeah, because that's the that's the one that just circles every it, all yeah, the way they just keep going, going around yeah. in circles. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so you can just take you know if you get to the Yamanote line, you can go anywhere in Tokyo. Yep. Between the Yamanote and the Chuo, you can go anywhere. Chuo goes right through the middle, so mm. you can go right through the middle of it. You know, you hit Yamanote, go to the Chuo, and then go straight through. Nice. But yeah, yeah, I love Japan. I really. I did. Yeah. There's a lot of it. I still I want to go back and just like actually see a lot more of it again. Because yeah, we're we're heading back now. It looks like 2023. I think is our return time now. We're gonna go back there. My uh, my bestie and I are going to get a a B and B an Airbnb. Uh huh. And then we're going. To, yeah, you're like, can I come along? Can I can I just come to hang out? I'll, right. I'll just hang out in the back. It's fine. Right. I'll, I'll I'll fit in your luggage. Um, I'll pay my way. Well, well, that's the thing. That's why it's got to be two years from now, because it's going to be, you know, to get the entire family is going to be like ten grand. Yeah. To get all three of us over there, and that's assuming we're going to couch surf a good portion of it, because there are a lot of families who are like, "You're not so, coming I mean, over here and just hanging out somewhere else. You're going to hang with us." Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, also, like, uh, I mean, Japan actually, surprisingly, is a lot cheaper than I thought. Yeah. It's the plane flight's the most expensive part because we also, we had six of us my first trip. So we just Airbnb'd everywhere. Yeah. And because we went from Tokyo to Kyoto in mm -hmm. a week because we went Tokyo, hung out there for a few days, went to Nagoya because our friend lived in Nagoya. We hung out there for a day and we went back to Tokyo to get back to our uh, Airbnb, which we were in uh, Taito. Um, okay. And then next thing you know, it's like we all just jumped back on a train. Like I think it was a day or two later, went all the way down to Kyoto and we had a new Airbnb there. We just hung out there for the remainder of the trip. It was like four days in Tokyo, three days yeah. in uh, Kyoto. And then, um, yeah, then we all just gunned it back up top. But I mean, like literally, it's not that bad. Like I, I was looking at the map and I was like, that's going to take us so long to get there to all these stops. But like the bullet train. Yeah. That is, bullet train. I was, yeah, I was so surprised. I was like, this is going to cost us everything. But with being foreigners, getting the JR pass actually saved us so much money. I tell we never everybody to... that everybody's like, what's the one thing you, I'm going to get a JR rail pass, get a rail pass. Seriously. Cause and it unless pays for your bullet trains and those it things does. like, it's a hundred dollars one way at least from Kyoto to Tokyo, because I actually had to buy my one way ticket to get back up to the airport. Because apparently, because we actually were there for it was like eight days, uh -huh. so we were actually there for like an, a little extended day. But the JR pass only lasts for seven days, mm -hmm. so and no one told me that this is how this works. So they all waited for the day after they landed to activate the JR pass. So they right. would get the full seven for there and while we're taking the bullet train, but I flew in to Narita, not Hinata. Gotcha. And they all flew into Hinata. So I was like, I don't know what to do. There was a person from, uh, from uh, Colorado, actually, that my friend knew that was actually on my plane flight. Miraculously, they were not supposed to be that. Like there was not like, I was like, I'm doing this all on my own. I'm going to have to figure this out. It's fine. And my friend from Colorado texts me. He's like, hey, I, I think my friend is actually on the same flight you're about to be on. I'm like, that's really convenient and really <laughs> weird. Because we were in uh, Vancouver at the right. time. And what are the odds? 
I know exactly. And she's like, because I took a picture of when I was in Vancouver at this. Uh, it was like a Canucks bar, the their their hockey team, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go eat at their bar just because I can, and I'm a hockey fan. So I was like, yeah, it makes total sense. So I went over there. I'm eating there, and I took a picture of me at this bar, and she's just like, are you still at that bar? I'm like yeah because i was just randomly texting people because we had like a six hour layover right. i was like it's either try and leave vancouver which i looked out the window there's nothing out there i was like yeah no we're not going to try and leave and go figure something out to do because it's it's waterlocked airport so you have to get a car drive all the way across, across the this bridge. bridge and then find something to do and then come all the way back I'm like that just sounds like a hassle yeah and also i'd rather be in japan i don't really care right now about vancouver no offense to Quebec, I love Vancouver, the but there's, like there's straight it was flights cold. now. Yeah, but I'm we so were in Vancouver. Next thing you know, this kid comes walking up. He's like, "Are you Colton?" And I was like, "This is really awkward, but yes." <laughs> Hold mm-hmm. on. He's like, "Sorry, I'm not so like our friend uh, Rye was like, hey, we, hey, my friend's up there with you. He's at this Vancouver Canucks bar thing. Send him the picture." And he's like, "Okay." He walked over. He's like, "Yeah, they, she told me to come find you." I was like, "Oh, hi." And we started talking. He's apparently been he, him and his wife apparently go to Japan like every year or every other year. They always go to Japan. They try out a new place every year. That's their thing. That's cool. So like, and usually they're like, but we always hang out in Tokyo for at least a day or two, and then we go take the rest of the trip somewhere else. Like we're gonna sure. go to Osaka this year. We're gonna go to Chiba. Like just just random big huge cities. They're just like we just go to random ones and experience each thing differently. They and they're fluent in Japanese. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And uh, yeah, so we were talking. And next thing you know, we did find out we're on the exact same flight. Which, well, and, and, and the truth is that there aren't that many flights. So no, there isn't. There, there's, there's, like, I mean, there's literally a good like chance. maybe two to three from major cities a day. Yeah, I mean, there's one Depending. flight out of Denver every day that arrives and then one that leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, and, and I know, I know this in because LA. You know, I have an adopted kid yeah. who's not really adopted, but she sort of is part of our family. Well, no, she's definitely part of our family, but she has parents. It's just that she keeps coming over here for summer. Um, she'd rather be here. So she's I now like our it. adopted mm-hmm. other kid. I have another mm-hmm. teenager. Um, but yeah, she comes over all the time and it's a great, it's great. Cause dad can drop her off. She's been coming over here since she was nine. Um, yeah, I've met her. And Dad can drop her off. Her to and her festival her and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. I've brought her before. My my little my little you know whatever you want to call her, and she's like an adopted daughter. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's pretty cool. So, um, and she just sits there quietly, like all good Japanese people. And it's like you don't have to be quiet here. <laughs> you can like make noise and stuff. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's, that's, and that's definitely one of the families we'd go live with when we head back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause they're, they're so embedded in our, um, in, in our family now. It's actually kind of funny cause not funny. It's sad. We, when events happen here, I'll talk to her dad and we'll sit there and have interesting discussions. He, he was raised next to an airbase. Okay. So he speaks fluent English, um, like complicated fluent English, which is what mm-hmm. he does. He works uh, with a company that is based out of Beijing. And mm-hmm. so the international business language right now is English. So they yeah. hired him because he was fluent in Japanese and English and could run the the Japanese branch. Yeah. So that's what he does. Nice. And um, so we met him because he like saw a bunch of ALTs, which included my wife sitting at a, um, at a restaurant and he walked over and he said, I is it, are any of you available to do classes? I'd like to teach my two year old daughter English. And I don't want her to have the accent that I have. Cause he has a, a rather thick Japanese accent. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want her to learn native English from now. And so my wife picked up, the kid and she was two and now she's like 16 um and that's kind of freaky for both of us we're like i can't believe that because 
we used to carry her around. You know, we have to like pick her up and carry her around all the time. But because of that, she sees us as just like uncle and aunt. You know. Oh yeah. What she just awesome, we're just part of her extended family, and that's totally fine. She that's lives crazy. with us every so often. You guys met him. Yeah, he literally right. walked over. Like, Hi, I need you guys to teach my kid English, and so right? she doesn't we, have we my. They were literally sitting at Caesarea, which is the you know I don't know if you ever went to a Caesarea, but um, what exactly is the Caesarea? It, it's a. I think they think that it's Italian. I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. Um, but it's a it's a chain, and they're everywhere. So okay, I don't uh, know. No, it's a sit down restaurant. Not. No, we didn't. We didn't. We went to a few different places. Like apparently, uh, Nagoya is known for um, eel. Yeah, like they have an eel dish that they specifically have. Like it's an eel rice, and there's like four different toppings. And I, I do that because take, like you have no idea what Ibaraki is known for. Oh my god! Did you ever try natto? Natto. 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 N a t t o. What is that? I might have. I tried a whole bunch of random things. Right. So. Fermented soybeans on top of rice. I don't remember if I did. So Ibaraki folks love natto. And to me, do you know that tester's model glue that we used to use? That's what it smells like. <laughs> sort of like. Kind no, of no. orange. Okay, I'll tell you then that no, I have not had not to. Yeah, because I would have and, known and that. And it smell. has about the same consistency too. So you yeah. grab the soybeans and you pull them up, and they got these strings of slime coming off of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's probably close to like eating raw okra. It would be okay. my feeling, you know, that kind of slimy, mm -hmm. you know, kind of. Which I love okra because I'm a southerner. I love okra to the day I die. But I've got to admit that raw okra is pretty gross looking. Yeah, I'll eat it because I love okra. But yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a raw okra, but I have had okra, and it's okra is wonderful fried. I mean, that's oh, yeah. one of my. I'll eat that like popcorn. <laughs> that's actually what my grandmother used to do when we were watching movies. We'd we'd sit and watch movies, and she'd fry up an entire bowl of fried okra, oh and then God. just sit it in front of my cousin, my sister, and I, and we just sit there and watch the movies. And, you know, of course, it was like, I tell people that now, and they're like, instead of popcorn, I'm like, well, to be fair, at least it was a vegetable. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, when, when it comes to, like, Japan, um, yeah, they, they really are into natto in, in uh, Ibaraki. But it's always something like that, and they're really big on that. They're like, we're famous for X, Y, or Z. We got to the point, of course, where we were like, yeah, I know you're famous for X, Y, or Z, but I'm not eating any more octopus or squid. I'm done. I'm so I've done. had a lot of it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm done. I, I am. So I made a rule for myself that I would eat school lunch every mm -hmm. day. And I made it a rule so that I would, because I'm picky. So I made it a rule so that I would ensure that I had everything my kids had. Yeah. And... Sometimes we would get rubber tire. I am sure that it might have been. I'm not 100% sure it wasn't the kids' bikes. But I think it was supposed to be octopus or plausibly squid. But it was a square about like this big. And it was yellow. And it had like a pattern on it that looked like tread. And it had the consistency of rubber. And I think it was supposed to be squid. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure I didn't eat horse somewhere along the line. I'm not 100% sure I didn't eat whale somewhere along the line. Entirely plausible. Um, I think I would have objected if I had known. Yeah. Because I don't think, I mean, Americans don't eat horse. No. We never eat horse. And it, it's cultural in our culture. It's like we don't eat dogs or cats. Yep. Um, but Japanese will eat horse. Mm -hmm. And so they, I, I actually. In my like second year, I told my that that second year teacher that I like so much. He and I became real good buddies, and I was like, "Hey, you know, it's cultural." Because he was interested in everything that was cultural about America. Oh yeah. And and he was like, "So you guys don't eat horse?" And I'm like, "No, we don't eat horse." And he's like, "Is this a John Wayne thing?" <laughs> I'm like, "Actually, <laughs> it kind Wayne of is." <laughs> like, That's awesome. It is kind of a John Wayne thing. I mean, we've had so many 
uh, years. We use uh, horses for transportation. Transportation for hauling things. Like they're they're a tool. They're not. A yeah, food. they were. They were a tool. They were uh, a pet. Transportation. We'd yeah. rather eat our car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is actually kind of funny about that because I was actually on that note though. It's actually like the whole dog thing. Uh -huh. Um, I was talking to so. I'm a part of Discord groups, right. and there's one of the groups I'm a part of where there's everybody around the world. And we were sitting there talking, and then somehow we got on the topic of, with uh, some people from Asia, and we got on the topic of, of eating dog. And I'm cool with it because I understand. It's cultural. It's whatever. It's cultural. I get it. And I know, like, so many people here, like, once you say that, they're like, oh, my God, you're the devil. Like, they freak out here in America when you start saying stuff like that. But, like, I was talking to him about it, or uh, some of them, he, and a good portion of it was like, I've had dog, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Dog's a poor man's meat. Like, we don't go out for dog on yeah, a nobody, regular. Nobody goes out to eat dog. Yeah. The only reason you do is it's a poor man's meat. Yeah. Like, a lot of the other, like, the, the weird animals that some people eat, you're like, what? They're like, no, that's literally, like, you can find it anywhere. It's a poor man's food. Mm -hmm. Like we don't, we don't just go out of our way of like, oh, I need this. And I was like, what's it taste like? They're like, it's kind of grainy. It's really not that great, but it's a, it's a, it's a poor man's thing. And I was like, huh. But at the same time, I was like, if I ever went over there and you toss it in front of me, it was like, hey, here's some meat. I don't think I would have ever asked. Right. I would have probably just been like, all right, cool, put it in my mouth and kept eating and be like. And then after a while, I was like, hey, Colton, you know what you just ate, right? And I was like, oh, I hate you. But that's fine. <laughs> yeah, and that, I can't go back now. I I kind of feel like like more people need to be like that. Yeah. Like I've noticed that uh, you know we were we were talking last or you were you and I were talking online here about how I don't like Hercules. Yeah. The Disney movie. Yeah. Yesterday. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I just don't. I don't like the stylized animation. I it it, it doesn't strike me well. But I it's totally so funny it. that in our culture, you know, it's kind of like we expect that that means that if you like Hercules, then I hate you or something weird like that. Yeah. And it's like, no, you can like Hercules all you want. In fact, just, more power to you. Yeah, no, that's fine. I got nothing against it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing is like there's there's things where it's like – you know, I, I have this belief. Like, I I hate South Park. I hate it so much. Because the I animation is so horrible. Oh, mine's not the animation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, the truth of the matter is the, the comedy was funny for season one and two. And then it just got raunchy. And for its I'm time, not a raunchy guy. Yeah. When it first you came know? out, like, I thought it was it was pretty clever. Because it was something totally different. To totally different. Hence why I was I was I was kind of into it when it first came out, but like never really got into it. Right. I like I like seeing what they used to do, and also like the backstory is always my favorite part too yeah. of those creators of going to a school that I was actually planning on going to, never never actually went, and that school pretty much telling them that they're never going to amount to anything. Right. Because your ideas are terrible. So what happens next? They leave the school. Now, guess what? They're freaking millionaires. <laughs> and to be fair, um, you never know. But that's one of the things that's amazing about our culture as yeah. it is right now. Um, you know, it's like our culture now with the ability to get on the Internet. All you need to do is find a thousand people that are going to throw like two bucks your way on Patreon every month. And you've got rent paid. Yep. You know what I mean? You can live off of that. Yeah, it's weird. Like, um, you know, and and finding a thousand people so is connected. not that hard with eight billion people on the planet. Yeah, you know, um, and the, and like, the fact that we can reach that yeah. is great. Yeah, being able to reach other countries too, because I know a lot of countries like there's a lot of people that I've that randomly jump on and like, oh, what's so right. what's different now? Oh, uh, yes. I should put up your thing because, like, it reminds me. Speaking of, but like, uh, there's a lot of people out there that they don't like. They will, oh, like from different countries. As we uh, like the, it's called Lightbox Expo. 
is what I'm referring to. It's an expo for uh, artists and more entertainment. Let me phrase that. Entertainment industry artists. I want to say is more of a better term for it. Sure. Um, in California, that just started up in 2019 and had been doing everything virtually since 2020 because of the pandemic. Right. But they, when they did everything virtually, they opened up a Discord channel. So everybody could sit there and talk who's attending the uh, conference and jump in and out of chat rooms so they can actually listen to uh, their favorite people talk about like this thing that's happening in the industry, what they see coming, what's coming next, yada, yada, yada. Because it's uh, video game designers, movie concept artists, comic book artists. Like, sort of our production group. Yeah, it's a production. It's we're, literally it's it's production artists is the best I, way to I describe like, how they go with this. I, yeah, I feel like we are specifically production artists. Mm -hmm. that, that's a class of artist that's like the worker group artists. We yes. don't just produce one piece a year and then hang it up in a gallery. Mm -hmm. We're working out there. We're we're building things. We're writing signs and you know whatever. We're we're production artists. Yeah, um, but like kind of on that note though, with that though, like. The whole English as being a world, a world like everybody's second language. Like you're not wrong because I've talked to people from all over the world on there mm -hmm. that speak English, yeah. and like it throws me off. I'm just like, I feel weird because I know all of you people on here because I'll be sitting there randomly at like three o'clock in the morning, and there'll be people from china there'll be people from japan there'll be people from australia like all over the place mm -hmm. england just jumping on and i'm just like what the heck is going on and right. I, like everybody speaks english and i'm just like it kind of it, it's it's weird because i only know one language i know very little bits of all these other languages mm -hmm. but like all these other people, they know multiple languages and I know sure. they do. And it, they're fluent in both of them or at least two to three of them. And I'm just like, I like, it kind of like makes that. me feel bad being American because right. we're always like English or nothing. Well, and I think that that, by the way, I was thinking about that this morning in my shower thought, you know, how you always get in the shower mm -hmm. and you're like, all the time. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, my shower thought this morning was, that's unique really to America. We're very much in the belief that the world revolves around us. Yep. Like and we're the, the most universe revolves out around there. us. Yeah. I was just having a discussion with a friend of mine and he lives in Australia. Yeah. And you know, I talk a lot, but even but there's a class of specifically US and Australians who really believe that the world is there for them. Yeah. And that's part of, I think, the problem we have with the world today, with us specifically. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, us. And I've been, I've been kind of seeing this, and I've been kind of, you get a certain amount of, there. obviously there's a group of us who we're worldly now, we've traveled, we realize that we're kind of insignificant in the world's eyes. Not, not like we're, a lost cause or like it's worth you know what i mean but it's we've been out in the in the world now and you realize that there are huge machines that are moving that have nothing to do with you yeah you know, big massive systems that just orbit and you have no idea that you're not part of it going to japan was an eye opener for me if nothing else for that yeah because i had to be part of the system i had to be part of the japanese system and I had to become Japanese. And we're so used to Americans never bow and stuff like that. When really, okay, that's kind of like coming over and not shaking hands. Yeah. And well, yeah, but we don't want to, you know, defer or show. And I'm like, yeah, see, that's part of the American problem right there. I mean, we there's go also other places and make them be American for us. That's what I was about to say is they always expecting us. They're always expecting those are the people that I always hate because I see them all the time, even when you do travel out of country. When they're like, Well, they need to be doing our thing. I was like, You're in their home. Yeah. Back up. Hold on. No, like hold I had on. to stop. We had actually I had one friend 
who kept saying things like that on occasion. I was like, hold on. Like, finally, it was, I think it was day two when we were in Japan. I was like, wait a second. Like, you're in their home. Right. Like, you can't be saying that. Yeah. Like, it was, uh, I remember what it was. We walked into a restaurant and they were like, no, 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 no. Which I knew exactly what was going on when they said that. They did not want foreigners in their restaurant. And I totally cool with that. We're in their home. They don't want us. Cool. We'll go down the street. There's three more. There's three more restaurants down there that have sure. something I've never tried before. <laughs> yeah, I am not offended because it's I'm their restaurant. That you had found one of those. It was a hole in the wall. I we really, well, yeah, it was I, really tiny. Were, <laughs> yeah, and it was. I actually had one of those in uh, EY, but they let us come in because we were city people. We belonged yeah. to the city. They knew us because we were the teachers in the schools. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, so they knew you though, like you guys had a reputation kind of thing. We had like a we reputation. Were random tourists, and also like we were a very mixed cultured group. Yeah, like we had, sure. we were every color of the rainbow. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and totally I think that was also like it kind of throws off a little bit with a lot of other like other countries. Like when we all yeah. walk in, they were kind of like, "Well, that's like I could see them going, that's a lot.' Hold on, no, no, no. <laughs> sure. Like that's a big change from what we're used to, which is fine." I get it. It doesn't bother me. But also, like, I think I did see a sign on the door saying no foreigners. Not foreigners, but uh, tourists. Yeah, tourists. And I think that's really what it was. It was no tourists because they didn't want to. They're like, because spe specifically Americans. For we don't this just go, exact reason. Yeah, for this reason. Like, I know this. Like, restaurants here like we're always nitpicking our menus yeah and we're like oh can you actually do this in this way can you do that I'm like well no this is what it is and that's what i know in japan is like what you order off the menu that's what it is you don't just go like oh i need you to take off that i need you to like not give me rice i need that to be brown rice instead of white right. like we don't like americans we nitpick everything because we want everything catered to us in we a do. way if that makes sense it's gonna and, be our way yeah, and I can totally see why they're like other countries, especially like restaurants, are like, no, 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 no. Like, we don't want you coming in here and trying to change our stuff. Like, right. we're well, here for a reason. <laughs> and, and that's like one of the other things is like, you know, if it's not Burger King, man, you don't get to have it your way. Yeah, exactly. Which is funny because in Burger King, you can actually have it your way in Japan. Yeah, which is actually kind Burger of things I ever found. McDonald's actually, I was really surprised. They were everywhere. There was oh, McDonald's I mean, not even everywhere. just everywhere though. But like, I actually, I told everybody, I was like, I want to get McDonald's. Like, why? I'm like, I've heard it's way different than American. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah. You so we go there, get all the food, and it actually tastes like food, right? <laughs> not well, like the original. I mean, you can get like a Big Mac there, but you can also get the the like the shrimp chicken nuggets. Yes. And it was like they actually cater to their like they do that, but also like I did order one of those like eight to, we we did breakfast there. And you if you've ever had McDonald's sometimes, you know that feeling of like you kind of just feel greasy afterwards. Yeah. There's an actual I, I we don't have a word for it, but I know other countries do. It's just that <laughs> greasy feeling. Probably has the word American in it somewhere. Yeah, probably. But um I never had that feeling. And also I had another friend that she's like, I never eat McDonald's because I just feel sick. I'm like, I'm trying it. I don't care. Because also here's the other thing I know. I'm walking everywhere. This isn't going to be in my system that long. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We had a McDonald's at the end of the street, like the main street. Yeah. There was a McDonald's down there. And I'd go in there every so often. And, um, you know, because I get nostalgic. I, yeah, I was there for three years and I never came home. So, like, I, I, after a while, it's like, I'm kind of missing America. <laughs> you know, I miss Medication. home. You feel it, yeah. Yeah, you feel it. So, I, you know, I went there and did that. That was, and it was, it was, it was, it was like, it wasn't bad. It was, and then, oh, my goodness, we had the Mega Mac for a while there. It was so freaking funny. It was, like, three Big Macs stacked together. And it was like. Why? I, I don't know, but I've got. I'll show you a picture because I, of course, naturally took a picture of it. Uh -huh. I'm like, I cannot believe this. This is. I don't even know what to what to say about this. That's um, huge. That sounds huge, and 
outrageous. Yeah, and you know, my kids, especially my boys, my boys yeah. all about it. <laughs> They would challenge each other. That, I was about to say that's also. I think that's just a that's just a thing that happens with kids, though. Like, I remember doing oh, that. Like, especially in like high school, we would always do that kind of stuff. Well, like <laughs> in sports groups and that that I was with. I was like, oh, let's go get like we go to like Culver's or something like that, and we just like get a five stack burger. We're gonna eat all of this. What's the biggest thing we could possibly get? You're like like after practice, you're like we're gonna die. It's fine. And yeah. like now that nowadays I look back at that, I was like, I probably could have clogged all my arteries right there and I would have had no idea. Probably did. You just didn't even know it, but all your arteries are like totally clogged. My body's uh, like, no. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it up. That's some of the funniest crap in this folder. Like <laughs> everything I could find that was bizarre, I left in this folder. That's awesome. There we go. But yeah, that like as you were saying, that, why the heck would someone do that? <laughs> right? Why is it bad? It makes it look like it's like spicy. That's know, awesome. It's awesome. Well, yeah. Well, this was the little placemat that they put on the table, I know. and so I just took it home one day and then scanned it. Uh, I know, um, but it's just like the smoky kind of red, like yeah, it's smoky red. background yeah. part. Just makes me like, if that's a spicy Big Mac burger, I would, actually would probably still be down. But like. That's yeah. way too much. It's like two patties on each side. And it was like, oh, okay. But what I, I what, what I love is it says beef heaven. <laughs> That's what it says under the Mega Mac there. It says beef heaven. Mega Mac is a level up. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> beef heaven. And your and your boys would always like they would challenge each other with oh these. yeah they were all about this my boys were all about that that was which is so funny though hard. like that's a lot like specifically for like people I know that are in Japan like portion size that's a yeah. lot to be eating it, it it is it is it's a lot oh that was but, also but, another thing I was watching someone else was like it, speaking of being American and having that one restaurant be like no 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 like they don't want to cater to us because like there was a person like I, I like to watch those videos like hey if you're a foreigner going over to japan this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do and i always yeah. like to watch them just to see if i saw any of that while i was there and one of them is right she's like she was talking she's like our portions are small mm -hmm. we don't eat like these big huge american portions and in reality if you're coming over here and you're still hungry, just order more. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do the one order and just like, no, like, come on. And that's another thing, like, for them, they always like, if you do hand them something, it's like, oh, here you go. We've put like our heart and soul into this. And you're like, that's it. Like, they know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can read your, I mean, body language is the same. Oh. Humans' body languages never change. It doesn't and also, matter like, where you are. That's kind of a thing in Japan too, is like reading body language. Yeah. Like you know the you, you read the room by that way. You're just like, oh what's going on? Oh, this this is not a room I need to be in. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I I uh this is my funniest thing. I love this. This is a good <laughs> picture. This is like the best. What did I, I had to take a picture of it. It says doa ni go chui, which means the the door is dangerous. Oh, okay. But I was like the last little bit. I was like, okay, I got door, but yeah, what's door the last me, and then this is go, and this is chewy, which is also uh, kaike, which you'll hear. But that's abunai. Okay, it's dangerous. It's it's warning, warning. Oh, okay. You know, it's it's that's what those two characters mean. But okay. it means what it means is the door is going to close on your fingers and hurt you really badly. Please don't let mm -hmm. it do that. But I love the picture, of course, they're typical of Japan. It's a cute little cat getting his tail stuck in the door. I mean, mm -hmm. that just cracks me up. That's awesome. I've got no, so stories. like I never got into the kanji side of learning Japanese. So I was like, okay, I got the door part, but like, what's the last bit? That's why I was like, what's right. that one? That makes more sense though, Chewy. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, yeah here's, um, here's a good one. This is the TNA golf course. <laughs> 
this literally was a golf place that was just outside of my town. I passed huh. it every day between going to school. And I'm like, yeah, see, they don't know what that means. I know that they don't know what that means because, no, it it was just a normal golf course. Was it a golf course? Okay. It was a golf garden. You know, the golf gardens are the ones that have the two stories and everybody puts off into the, oh, into the field yeah, out yeah, there yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Okay. No, so, oh, I was kind of curious with that part because, I mean, I was talking, uh, I used to work in the lawnmower field back when I first met you, and it was in the golf golfing industry. Yep. And we would always, I would always hear things about Japan and golfing. Like, apparently it's a thing. It, oh, yeah. Like, it's like they a will massive look golf out. course yeah. between my, there was a massive golf course between my city and Mariah's city. And so you'd just drive along and then all of a sudden it'd just be links all to your right and to your left. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, there's that, you know. So actually, funny thing about that golf course, I think it's the one I'm thinking of. Um, you have to put in a two year reservation. Yep. Before you can actually even get on the green. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of the guy like there's people I was like, one more time. They're like, yep, there's golf courses in Japan where you put in your like, I would like to play this game on May 6 of 2023. And they're like, OK. And 2023 comes around and they're finally like they call you up. Just make sure it's like, hey, just let you know your uh, schedule tea time starts up at eight o'clock this morning. And they're like, oh, OK, we'll be there. And I'm like. You literally have to plan out a two-year trip to a golf course. Because also, like, here, I mean, but it's also, like, they don't have the land to just right. build all these random golf courses like we do. Well, and that's, that's like, the other things that, like, for example, I love the Ghibli Museum in Mita. Oh, yeah. I would love to go there. I actually, but that's one place to, I did not get to go to. Well, it's because you have to buy the tickets at a Lawson. Right. And you usually have to buy them two or three months in advance because two they're already booked. Bad, though. No, it's not. But two or three months mm -hmm. is bad. If you're, if you have to fly to Japan, go to a loss and buy the tickets and you're only there for two weeks. Yeah. That's the good true. news is I can call up the heroes and say, Hey, hey, hey guys, Will you pop over to the Lawson and grab me some tickets for <laughs> this date? This We're going time. in at this time. You guys want to get some tickets very quick? Yeah, you so want to join me? Here, we finally go. I know totally that. Yeah, I would. It, uh, I would love to go to that one. Oh my god! Oh yeah, that, it's wonderful. I, I think I that's pictures of that too. My next trip, I would love to go do museums. My next time I'm out there, just because, like. Museums out there are, are so different too. Like they have so right. many cool. Things. Everything is different. Um, let's see here. I like my biggest. I'm not gonna lie. My favorite part. Everybody's like, because I went over there. Let's see. All in all, I think I maybe spent like trip and all three thousand dollars. Yeah, is all I spent. And that includes Airbnb, plane flight, yeah, JR, right. pass, all that stuff. Because we're we're saying a 10 k for the family. We've got three of us, yeah. so that's about three, three you know, thirty two hundred, thirty two. And a little bit extra just to be safe. Always make sure you always have. You like I had an extra. Stuff. Like when I came back, I had an extra grand sitting in my pocket. I had more money in my pocket than I was actually expecting to have when I got back. But that's yeah. also because I found out, like when I got there. I actually didn't care about buying all the little knickknacks and toys and things that I thought I was going to. I was like, oh, Akihabara, I'm going to buy all this stuff. And you did. And literally, like, no, me and my friend, like, we became foodies. <laughs> we spent all of our money on food. <laughs> well, and that's that makes sense. I mean, like, I, personally, I, I, you know, I kind of think about that, too. And it's like, well, like, when I you spent back, money on food and get? clothes. That's it. Which all fit in like the clothes all fit in my suitcase because i still left room in my suitcase because i knew i was going to buy a thing or two right but also i had a pretty big suitcase and also like it's really not that like if we really if i really needed something i would buy it but as like i hit that point where i'm like do i really need this and I would look at the thing for a while. We'd go walk around. I'm like, no, I don't. No, and then no, I, don't. I would come back and be like, 
and just see it one more last time. I was like, no, but it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of what what am I going to do when I go there? Yeah. You know, um, like I know that one of the things I really want to do is go go to uh, the Ghibli Museum and actually buy. They've got the little pan of watercolors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all Holbein and stuff like that. But that's going to be, I don't know, like three mon, four mon. So like $300 that's or cheap. something like that. Something ridiculous. Yeah. And that's so great. I'm going to be setting aside like three mon or four mon and it'll just sit over there and I'll hold it and we'll get there. Yeah. Or we won't. We'll see. Who knows? Where is the Ghibli Museum at? It's in Mitaka. Mitaka? Yeah, it's south South Tokyo. South Tokyo, okay. Oh, that's not that bad. Okay. Yep, South Tokyo ish, give or take. Yeah. The one thing I do I, I was kinda annoyed just because we were we were in Taito, which is North Tokyo. Um, we wanted to go see uh the Gundams. Yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we weren't able to really Totoro, do that. Me being Totoro. <laughs> that's awesome. There's me being Kiki. <laughs> this is fantastic oh my god it was awesome it was the best yeah oh, that was man. so I, much fun it was beautiful um that's it was a lot of fun i love this place the best part is like on the roof it's so weird seeing you fully clean shaven though because i've only I know. known you with facial hair <laughs> i know but oh, on, so cool. on the roof that's my yeah. wife Staying <laughs> a human for scale. That's my wife. <laughs> human for scale. She's like, well, that's big. Yeah, I had to be cleanly shaven for the first few years that I was there, but then ultimately I decided to grow out a beard, and everybody said, "Oh wait, never mind. You need to grow a beard. You look better with a beard. <laughs> you look better with a beard. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because there's yeah." Ghibli Museum. Mitaka. That makes sense, though, the whole clean shape. I mean, it's also a cultural thing, too, for them, too. It is. They have a hard time growing facial hair. I mean, one, they have a hard time growing facial hair, but two, it's it's more professional. It is. Business and is a thing over there. It was actually really funny um, because I uh, I grew out my, my beard. And at school, they were like, oh, that's pretty cool because I did it over summer. Yeah. And everybody was like that. And I thought I was going to have a big fight with like the principal and stuff like that. And he was like, hey, like the beard. And I'm like, OK. But then I went to Kudo class and my sensei said, no, cut the beard. No off. beard. <laughs> <laughs> He's he like, no, get rid of it. <laughs> he was like, it looks horrible. Get rid of it. <laughs> but it, it's that was so of all the things that I treasure. Being that embedded in the culture is yeah. the biggest one. So that embedded awesome. that a Japanese person would say, cut the beard off. It looks horrible. You know, where you know, just hitting that first buffer on Japanese people, you'd never hear that direct. Oh, yeah, no. They'd be just like, hmm. Yeah. And just kind of walk away. That, that beard is interesting. And you'd have to yeah. read that that meant no. <laughs> it would literally like circle around and be like, they wouldn't actually tell you, no, don't wear that. They'd be like, yep. So that, uh, that's a that's an interesting shirt you got on right now. Shirt. yeah. But that's that, also you know, understanding the body really. language portion of it, too. Yeah. Is they're big on body language. Because you can you would get that, like, if you understand how that works, you'd walk in and they'd be like, well, and you're just like, this is a bad, this is a bad idea. Got it. I will not do this tomorrow when I come back, or I'm going to leave right now. I'll be right back. Right. Well, and that's that. The only time they actually said no was when I took my masks because I, you know, I was yeah. sick, so I had a mask, and I drew lips on it, and they were like, "No," <laughs> at the school. And I'm like, "Oh, come on, the kids love it," and they're like, "You're a teacher. Come on." <laughs> and I'm like. I'm a teacher, but that doesn't mean it doesn't, it can't be fun. Yeah. And, and I think I had, that was the biggest conflict that I ever had with everybody in Japan was that was, you know, I, I teach 
like my teachers taught here. Yeah. Which is sometimes fun, sometimes making you laugh. Somebody had said, if you don't realize that teaching is part performance, you're doing it wrong. Right. And so I was a performer. I sat there and I messed around with the kids and I made jokes and I mm -hmm. did silly things. And okay, yeah, when they were reading manga under the desk, I'd take their manga away, you know. And I mean, like all the things that a teacher is supposed to do, but I'd give them their manga back at the end of the class. Right. Yeah. Yeah, never. Hey, pay attention right now, and then yeah. afterward you can do whatever the heck you want. Yeah. I'd tap them and tell them to pay attention, and mm -hmm. you know, when they were falling asleep, I'd make sure I'd balance things on their head. You know, things like that. It was, <laughs> it was the thing. I love that. It was like I had, I would always pick up their eraser, and I'd sit on when they were like doing this and nodding off, I'd pick up their eraser, and I'd just sit it on their head. <laughs> And so they'd be like, what's he doing? <laughs> I'm like, well, you had the eraser on the table. You're falling asleep and you're nodding like this, waiting for it to drop and make a loud noise in the middle of the class. That's and it's awesome. funny. No, but that's, yeah, that's I mean, that's yeah. good stuff, though. Like, that's things that I expect from teachers. Yeah. But that's also, like you said, it's a here thing. It's a here thing. There, they weren't doing that. However, when I left, all of my kids were sad. Yeah, because they had a lot of fun and I heard from them for years. I've been hearing from kids who now are in their 20s, That's awesome. you know, and they're still saying, you know, we had ALTs in elementary school. We had ALTs in high school, but we remember you. And I'm like, oh, you know, that's important. That is important. That's really good, though. That Like and see, that's the difference of being that just like you're a rememberable teacher that you actually did something for their lives that they're like, we actually really appreciated it. Yeah. We, ch I changed the course of a number of people's lives. That's important. Mm -hmm. That's the best I, part. That's all you can ever ask to be a teacher. I right. Think. Well, that's all like, you can ask in life is to yeah. make a positive change in people's lives, you know, not be a negative yeah. change in people's lives. Like I am with yours, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that was the thing I always was telling people back in the day. They're like, so what's your end goal for like when we're doing comic books and things? And every time I'd somehow get on an interview with that, too, I was like, I just want to inspire people. Like, yeah. it's not even literally like, hey, I want like I want to make the next best comic and like make all this money, blah, blah, blah. No, it was like, I just want my stuff to like inspire someone to do something like I I can't count how many times I've given away markers or pens to kids that were like super in and i didn't do it to everybody i only did it to the kids that i knew they had that like they had that fire you could see it in their eyes they're like yeah. i want to do this like i just don't understand how you're doing it i'm like it just takes practice you just got to play with it longer like oh what and then they would start asking questions i was like those are the kids i'd be like i got a pack of six six uh microns or something sitting here in my pocket and i was like but I also know it never really was a loss for me. Everybody always thought I was just throwing money away. But I was like, I got no. bags of these sitting at home that are full of the same stuff. Right. Well, I think that's what we were after with Red Team Go. Yeah. I mean, I was, was there the for helping inspire and get people like into like getting kids wanting to be artists that's, and that's doing things. That's the point of this art. show. I mean, you know, get get on here. Yeah. If you want to ask questions, ask questions. Like, yeah. Like, what was it? last week we had that one person blue or whatever i think yeah. is what we called them yeah like they jumped on and they were like oh this is really informative like we were just talking about like copic markers and things like actually explaining like how they work and, and why, they, why you use them. out and yeah yeah but like th that was our thing like we never really i never was really there for the money i know that much i was there to create inspiration and it's actually the one reason why, like I told everybody when they first started, like if they ever came and joined, it was like, this is not a one-stop shop. If you want to make this your one-stop shop, that's cool. I'm very flattered. But I'm hoping this inspires you to keep moving on forward too. Like, oh, you really want to do comics, but I really want to go work for Marvel. I want to go work for DC. I want to create my own. Right. Like, cool. Go. Do your thing. I'm not here to stop you. We're just here sure. to like inform you and get you like ready to even attempt that kind of thing because it's a it's a i want to say dangerous world 
but it's it's a scary world to just jump yeah. into something that you have no idea what you're getting into. And we were pretty <laughs> lax about a lot of it. There's a lot of things like when someone was like, oh, I really want to do this. I'm like, cool. I'm going to be a little hard on you on occasion. But that's because you also need to understand if you're going into the industry, you need a little bit of hard on occasion because you're like, this is what you're going to be expected. Sure. Well, so. I think that that's I think that's like key is that you get people who get hung up on a little detail. Yeah. It's a little problem. It's nothing big. It's certainly not worth getting hung up on. Um, you know, I, I, and I keep thinking about the way I learned to do comics, mm -hmm. you know, in the nineties, I started out by drawing my comics with a ballpoint pen on copy paper because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was. I mean, I had figured out that I probably shouldn't use pencil. Yep. But I hadn't figured out anything beyond that. Um, and so I started out with my first pages on comics were a ballpoint pen on copy paper. Then I realized. Then I found uh, ink markers, or not ink markers, but like uh, the microns. Yeah. Uh, the Sakura pens. Mm -hmm. I found those in a store and went, I wonder if these would make a better line. And then mm -hmm. I did. And then I was sitting there making my little comics when my best bud was like, something's not right about it. And he said, let me try something. Cause he had his own business at that point. Uh -huh. And so he grabbed one of my pages, took it over to the photocopier and reduced it 50%. And then he pulled it out and he goes, yeah, see, this looks more like Romoko Takahashi. <laughs> and I, and we all of a sudden went, Oh, maybe we should be on 11 by 17 paper. Now I understand what I'm missing. Yeah. Now I see what I'm missing. It's crazy. You kept finding it in a different way. I yeah, I had to like information. trip over all of this stuff the wow. hard way. Yeah, so you tripped over started, all of it. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I <laughs> and I, I still remember that's still one of my favorite James stories. James is my best bud. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's like my favorite James story. We were sitting there, I was just drawing, and he was working on a computer, and we were at his office uh yeah. at the time. And he was looking at it and he's like, it just, not you. Uh, that was, that was Alexa who's triggered by the C word. Um, anyway, but he, and he was looking at it. And he's like, I don't know. And he happened to have like a copy of Ranma. Uh -huh. And it was, and he happened to have that sitting next to him and he picked it up and he just looked at the page and he looked at my work and he looked at my page and he's like, I think you have the technical skill, but it doesn't look right. You know? So yeah, then he stuck it on the photocopier and shrunk it. Ah, <laughs> uh, what were you, then so that, wait, what, what, what size paper were you drawing on at the time? Eight and a half by 11. Oh, wow. I was, I mean like normal copy paper just pulled yeah. straight out of the copier. Okay. And, and I had, I had finally figured out to abandon my ballpoints and I got the mm -hmm. Sakura pens. Mm -hmm. And I was starting my technique that I do now with the technical pens where I go down the line on the bottoms and then I come back up it so it gives it thickness mm -hmm. so I can make it have sort of that sweep that you get with brush pens without a brush pen because I didn't know right. I needed a brush pen, right? So I, I didn't know. You I just never trying to learn different this. tricks. You thought this is how people did these tricks. Right, exactly. I just kept, I kept doing things where I was like, this looks right. This yeah. looks right. Um, man, I have a couple of my thing still. early comics over there. And um, at some point, I can see that it, that my, my master pages that were 11 by 17 started getting cyan, black, magenta, and yellow uh, marked on the sides, which oh, yeah, must yeah. have meant that I saw somewhere an actual like Marvel comic board or something because that's what the marvel comics do is they'll put the 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 color marks on either side on all four mm -hmm. corners and i obviously had like zero clue what it meant at the time but like some of my 11 by 17s i'd just go to kinko's and copy them and so i made a big sheet that i made i printed two pieces of paper out and then taped them together then took them to kinko's and had them photocopy that onto 11 by 17 
so that I'd have these 11 by 17 master pages. And then I'd scan the top half in, and then I'd scan the bottom half in and go into Photoshop and merge them together. Oh. I mean, I had to go through all of this. Um, you I, were I, doing it the old school way. <laughs> right? I blunt force doing this. I, I did all of the text out of uh, Word because Photoshop didn't have text tools back then. Uh huh. So I do all the bubbles in Word and then print them out on paper and then cut them out and then glue them onto the page and then make the tails. You're literally doing everything like the actual way that they, how they made comics back right? then. Right. Because I mean, like, that's, that's the thing I actually like about like a lot of the, like the old Marvel and DC comics. Yeah. If you look at them, you can actually still see like little tape marks in that from the paper copiers and all that stuff that they were doing or like, yeah. um, they got, they got your shirt wrong. So they'll cut out like that little piece right. on a different color piece of paper and just like put it over it. And then they just there. Okay, cool. Done. It's red. <laughs> right. And right. then next thing you know, it's like, that's how they used to do it. Like, that was a thing. That's awesome, though. Like, that's totally. so cool hearing about it. Because well, you don't get that nowadays. People are like, oh, no. I'll just fix it in post. <laughs> well, I, I, we build everything now. I mean, I build all my comics now in Clip Studio Paint. There's yeah. no reason not to. It literally can hold everything from the script all the way through to the final product. There's no point in me not using Clip Studio Paint for everything, except that I hate the text tool. But other than that, it's not. Yeah, that. the text tool is a little interesting. That's for sure. Yeah, you gotta, well, it's, it's you gotta get used to for it. Japanese, and I know that. Yeah. yeah, that's the other problem that sucks with it. It's designed for like I'm not saying it sucks, but no. like it's a Japanese program. Mm -hmm. So all the technology that they're building into it is from Japan. So yeah, their text is built how the Japanese sentence structure is supposed to be built. Yeah. And which, if I remember, it's top to bottom, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like when you're trying to lines going from right or right to left, not left to right. Yeah. So if we're trying to do everything from left to right, like it completely like throws off their algorithm with them a little bit. Where yeah. you're just like, hold and on. It doesn't do it right. Yeah, and, and they got, like weird crap. I I was having this problem last night. I, I have, I'm I am sort of thinking I'm going to move away from Adobe. I'm tired of Adobe. I'm That's tired cool. of Adobe being fifty dollars a month and then them not listening to me when they break something, um, and you know blaming my computer for it when I had the same problem with four different machines. You know, they're all different, completely and different versions of Photoshop. Yeah. Um, and I'm tired of all of that. So I've been trying to force myself to always use Clip Studio. Um, and so actually, that's what I was doing last night when I built this picture. Um, and so I made this picture and I, I was trying to label all the pieces in Clip Studio. And I'm like, Clip Studio, the thing, one of the things that they've got right now, they're getting better. Every version gets a little bit better on the text. Yeah. But the, the one thing that was driving me crazy was it always defaulted to black. No matter what color your palette was set for, it was black. It and of course, my picture is space. So it's a black page with a star and all of its stuff around the star. And all the labels had to be in blue. Otherwise, you couldn't see them. So I was typing in the blind so then I could select it, then turn it blue. And I had yeah. to do that every with every one of them. And I'm like, you can't remember the text is not just black by default. There might be a presetting for that, though. It, it, it will remember stuff. Yeah. I'm and curious, though. Like, there has to be something in some, one of the settings. I, I remember something with that. Like, I was playing with it one day, and they're like, and I was just looking up a video, and they're just like, oh, no, you go here, here, and here. And I was like, what? And I click, click, click. I'm like, oh, that fixed the whole problem I've always been having. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It's uh, There is text color. Main color, sub color, or user color, and it's set for user color. Ah. Which means that it'll always be black because the user color is always black. Yeah. But if I set it for main color, it's always it going to go off whatever, whatever color you're clicked on. Yeah. Nice. There we go. Yeah, I knew there was had to be a setting. Just like, there's a lot of there's a, that's the thing. Actually, I went into Clip Studio when it like uh, back when we were all hanging out at uh, Perkins. Yeah. When I finally got that tablet, I went into there because I'm like, I know there's something I'm missing here. And I just started going through the presets one day and I found a few things and I was like, oh, well, yeah, shoot. I think the only thing that would make Clip Studio better for me is uh, 
encased text. Encased text? Looks like we're having streaming issues. So yeah. If I lose you, I'm sorry. Um, you know where you take in Photoshop and you make a square and all the text always fits inside that square? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I lose that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're frozen. So I'm oh, I'm frozen. You're frozen on my end. <laughs> I can still hear you though. So. Oh, that's good. So, am so I a good. robot or no? No, no. Oh, you froze. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say you're frozen, but it's you so also kind of have like my robot. Ooh. So that's probably a 15 minutes left of the show. That's fair. So if we just get we in the show or like we're good. Yeah, and we'll see you Friday. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I do want to kind of share the, the picture that I did. I'm proud of this picture. Yeah. That's, this is what what I was working up all night. I'll make it full screen. Or not. Well, have an issue over here. <laughs> um. There we go. Now it's full screen. So. Oh, you okay. See, yeah, you can kind of see where we're headed on this one. Yeah. Give me two so, seconds. I want to see something. The uh, Oh, I'm, I'm up to yellow now. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> You're still in red. Well, we have weather going on outside. And every time we have weather, apparently that's enough to kill my internet. I don't know. Which is weird because I didn't realize that you were, um, what's the word? No, yep, yeah, your site is fuzzy. I was kind of curious. It shouldn't be fuzzy, yeah. But the that's getting better, but yeah, no, I see what you're working on. That's kind of cool. That, uh, I was, I, I'm showing that when you fly near a star, this purple area right here, um, is what they what they call the ergosphere. And sometimes it's the same size as the singularity, and sometimes it's not, depending on the spin of the star. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're talking about a black hole, the ergosphere is like this really weird zone, which in a black hole, there's a theory you can put power and maybe even matter out of it. Yeah. Um, but if you get to this blue area in the center there, that's the singularity, and you are toast. Yeah. Right. In a black hole, that would be a deafening. So in a black hole, that'd be the event horizon, yep. which is where you get speedified. That's when you start getting pulled in. Yes. But in the ergosphere, time and space are getting twisted and going in a circle. So they're going, it's going this way. Oh, there you the go. You're up now. So. Um, time and space get twisted inside there. And so uh -huh. uh, it's one of those, you can fly in that zone in my comic, but it's not going to end well, <laughs> you know? But yeah, I had to draw this. I had to like draw it all out. I couldn't sleep until I drew it. That's awesome. And like all these different levels and all these different things and showing things like when you get to a certain speed, even the little rocky planets end up getting a singularity around them. Huh. So going too fast through a solar system, like asteroids will have a singularity. You'll get killed by an asteroid. Yeah. You know, but not just, you know, an asteroid punching a hole in your ship, but like the asteroid will just, you know, string you out in a, you know, five kilometer long string of atoms, you know, <laughs> and that's it. But I really wanted to do this. I was like, oh, I really want to draw this. So I had to. I remember there's a thing of, like they say, like space debris is actually super dangerous. Yeah. It, because of that kind of concept, though. Totally. Space debris is dangerous. Or space debris is dangerous because of speed. But yeah. you know, I've got uh, magical, mystical, you know, wave your hand shieldy oh, things. Yeah. That no, I, from I, that. I'm not saying you need to go that in, that in depth. I'm just saying, like, because it's sci fi, but. You can kind of play did, around with did you, you want. did you see the picture I just drew? This is <laughs> I'm definitely going to that. It's a fancy donut. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. I love it. It's awesome. So that's 
that was what I had to do last night. And I just had to draw that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to put little, like, super deformed versions of my characters, and they're going to all be sitting here talking about how to fly in space. And then I'll release awesome. that as, like, an omake. That's not for Camberlin, is it? That's not what? What uh, what comic's that one for? That's for Blightrix Rising. Oh, okay, so that's, okay. That's the, the, my Star Trek that isn't yeah. Star Trek. I, I had to reinvent space travel because I can't just use warp drive. Um, so I invented this in space, like a hyperspace that they travel in. But mm -hmm. I think I said this at the beginning of the show. I had to come up with a way to make it so that it was dramatic. Yeah, you can't just pop in hyperspace and then fly around all the time because then that would be boring. You know, there'd be no. So, so a couple of things like in, in space, um, anything with a silicon burn doesn't work. Computers, uh, one of the races, they have to go to sleep. They have to be put to sleep. Um, things like that. It's not oh. put to sleep permanently, but they have to be in like a cryogenic freeze when you're For flying. Being... I now yeah. really curious why. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and that's part of kind of a plot of the the big arc plot. Okay. Is, um, but I have uh, one of the things that I'm doing in my comic is I've turned AIs into just other people. Oh, okay. So the AIs are just more people, and we we, we get that right off the bat with um, the the main one of the main characters shows up for duty carrying Ensign Chow. It's a box. You know, it's, I'm Lieutenant Legend, and this is Ensign Chow. We're uh, you know, showing up for duty. But since they don't allow holograms on the landing decks, he can't actually project himself, so he's in a box. Oh, that's cool. He's in a box. And when he gets on the ship and plugged in, then he can show up anywhere in the ship. You know, but, oh, nice. But yeah, but the thing is, like, this incident is. Fresh and he's like three years old, and he's never worked in the private sector. Everybody's like, oh, come on, he's gonna kill him because you know, he's, he's, he's a boot, right? And he's in charge of the ship. You know, that's gonna be his job is to control the ships and current operations. And yada, yada, yada. That's what AIs tend to do, too. But like the previous AI promotion, and so she's moved on to a different ship. And you know, she used to work as a daycare control, you know, running a building that was a daycare. And so that was, you know, she had experience and all this stuff. When they brought her on board the ship, she joined the military late in her life. And, you know, mm -hmm. so the, the whole idea is you like, they're, they're, they've got these lives. They're not just a thing that, you know, you know, tell the AI to run the ship, you know, God, it's an, it's another life form on the ship and I'm going to treat them that way. Right, right, right. But they're, they're actually also, they're an entity. They're an entity, but since they're silicon, they can't operate in in space. So you have to have a pilot, pilot, physically holding the controls and flying the ship in in space. And That's it's cool. usually human or just seen the two races that can live and think in in space. So those two are the only ones who are pilots and. It actually, that's one of the things I kind of have a little interaction between the pilot and the AI in the story. Because they're like, you know, the AI is like, I kind of want to be a pilot. And, you know, the, 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 the pilot's like, it's a great job. I'm sorry you can't, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a bummer, you know. And so they kind of have that little exchange. Right. So, but yeah. So anyway, I had to kind of come up with a way to make it complicated and difficult to so i guess one of my questions is what what comics are you working on nowadays because i remember you were working on at least like two or three back in the red team go days i i'm still working on um two at this point but one of them's on permanent hiatus or uh, you know in dis undisclosed hiatus um because the witches of flame yeah is is the alternate history one. Yeah, because I remember you were writing that one back we're in the we middle were doing of like all that. a renaissance of alternate history Apollo stories right now. So I'm going to wait until that cools down a little before I redo that. 
Okay. Um, we'll revisit that. So I'm going to let that cool a little bit. And um, Tamberlin's the one that the little robots, right? Your little uh, that's comic Springs. Strips. Springs. Yeah, Spring, Springs is, Tamerlan was was a Star Trek fan comic. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Yeah. And what's happened is that's what the, you made the um, the captain was the the, the Asian girl, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and I I moved all the characters from Tamerlan over into Bellatrix Rising, and then just generated a world around it. Okay. So I okay. can now take all this because I had written like a ton of scripts for Tamerlan. It's awesome. And they're really good, interesting ideas. All of them are very interesting, you know, very Star Trekian sort of ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, one of them's about uh, a mining a mining corporation that is mining oxygen. And they the workers are all the aliens that don't breathe oxygen. And so the mining corporation is withholding carbon dioxide, which is what they breathe. Hmm. To keep them working, you know what I mean. To make sure, so they're, they're they're rationing out the carbon dioxide, and of course, that's the the moral quandary here is that they're not part of the Federation. How do you deal with this? You know, they're humans and under the human purview, but you know, how do you deal with the fact that they don't they don't have to follow the rules? Uh, oh yeah, I bet you that that's probably something ridiculous two two one i don't even know where that is um but you know like stories like that i mean it's just like i had all these really great stories and i was like but if i write thousands upon thousands of pages of a star trek fan comic i'll never be able to sell it yeah i'll never be able to do anything with it so that's what i'm doing with bellatrix rising it's tamerlan it's nice yeah. I, I moved the characters over the captain of of this ship is a short asian girl I mean, it's. Yeah. I changed her name because there's a backstory that I had to change because uh, Cochrane's backstory was based off of her being the great 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 granddaughter of Zephram Cochrane, which is a part of Star Trek lore. Right. So I had to dump that, um, and she also was raised on Tarsus Four, which is a colony that is also part of Star Trek lore. So I had to dump that. So all of like Cochrane's backstory got kind of confused, but. I've kept all the key points of the character that are mine. She's had a daughter. The daughter died. And that put the character on sort of an outer orbit loop where she's sort of self-destructive. And that's where we meet her in the beginning of the story. Okay. So you were using more like you rewrote this as Star Trek as a reference point than an right. actual. I took all the characters and moved them over. So it's still Cochrane. It's still Bennett. It's still um, Ward. It's just that now Ward has been moved over to Mayrell, and that I changed her name. And okay. she is the Spock of the group. She's she's part of a gypsy group sort of thing, a roaming group called the Deastati. So she's the one that's sort of the outsider and the outlier character. Mm -hmm. And then I moved, like, there was a, the helmsman. I've moved him over to be the AI Oh, cool. So, you know, because the jobs changed a little bit with the technology as I changed the technology around a little bit now. So, right. but it's still the same characters. They're in, in Tamerlan, there was sort of a, a relationship between um, the character that's now Mayrell and the character that's now the AI. And so I've, you know, the same, that same relationships there. It's still building the same way. Yada, yada, yada. Um, all the characters are the same. I just changed their names or changed. I, I didn't like the ethnicity of my original, the ethnicity distribution. Mm -hmm. and so I've changed my ethnicity distribution a little bit so that it's a little bit more uh, representative of the world. Yeah. Um, because really, honestly, if you take one from 1% 1 of our population, let's say, of the world, you're going to end up with like still 60% Asian because China is huge. <laughs> I mean, not even just China, just Asia in general is the biggest mm -hmm. con continent we have. And there's so many, like, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> it is. So like literally I think Asia alone, like still takes up, and this also includes Russia because it's part of Asia, like yep. still takes up like half of the world. 
Yeah, but China has like two billion people. Oh yeah. And oh, out of eight yeah. billion people, two billion is a quarter. That's a lot of people. <laughs> That's a big number. Yeah. That is a big number. And if you think that there are eight billion people on the planet, China holds one quarter of them. Mm -hmm. Just China. And we're not even talking about India. Oh yeah, no. You know, India's packed to the gills too. So anybody in that Asian continent, if you were to take a, a, an even representation of it, you're going to end up with heavily people from India, people from China. You know, you're going to end up with the Chinese and Indian sort of contingent being mm -hmm. the bulk. So I redistributed my uh, my my ethnicities a little bit, but the stories are all the same. I mean, the you know, really the truth is when it gets down to it, ethnicities is just simply what marker do you use when you when you color their skin in because the characters didn't change. Yeah. You know, nobody changed the character. I, I didn't change their story, their you know, I mean, but yeah, this way I can now run my own stories. And that's really what it's boiling down to. So oh, all awesome. of the stuff that I'm doing here is just, I love doing tech manuals. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember you, I remember that. I remember you showed me a few and I was like, guy, you have a lot of time on your hands. If this is what you like doing, <laughs> like, cause it's not my thing though, but I really, I actually appreciate seeing it though, because I'm like, you're the person that actually does all that. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, and, and, and voluntarily too. And you're like, yeah. why, why would you do this? Why would you hurt yourself like this? <laughs> Like people are like, why would you? I'm like, I have fun doing it. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, you do I, your thing. Yeah. Hey, like I literally gonna... started this at like 9:30 last night. This this big donut. I started it at 9:30 last night. I'm like, I'm just gonna sketch it out real quick. And yeah. then two in the morning rolls around, and I'm like, well, I should have been in bed. I should have been in bed a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, that's the concept. That like that's that's kind of the thing that I I like about the in certain industries yeah. specifically like um that's kind of one reason like i kind of wanted to go into the video game industry is because you have more specialists yeah you don't have oh you do have the well-rounded people as well but majority of the people that are actually in video games especially the art world are specialists like you mm -hmm. have your 3d modelers that's all they do is 3d model and ZBrush and all that stuff. You have your yeah. UI designers. You have your character designers. You have your environmental artists. Like they have that specific thing that they're really good at, and they're paying you to do that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like, in the same sense, like if we ever did a comic book together, guy, kind of thing. I was like, if we ever got to a tech manual side of it, I'm like, you have fun. Yeah. I'm gonna let you do that. I'm gonna do what I'm good at. Every time that comes up, I'll man. take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll sit there forever. Yeah. I when it comes to this, I've spent most of COVID mm -hmm. doing the tech manual for this. Awesome. You could build a role playing game off of Bellatrix Rising now because there's That's so cool much though. more. Yeah. You know? You've had so much buildup in it that you could literally do that kind of stuff. And I can tell stories out of it for ever, forever and ever and ever and ever because yeah. there's so much. I mean, I just writing up stuff, I think of things. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, I wanted to have like, I, I, I went through the entire time. I think I showed this last Friday because I, yeah. I don't know what happened. I got into this thing. I got a bug. So I started writing the timeline to try to figure out if humans could recover from only having 65,000 humans. Yes, I do remember this. We did talk about this. And while doing the timeline, I'm like, oh, God, we're already at like two trillion people. I've got to do something. So I, I would have a war to wipe out a trillion of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because in the like Guys, in, in five hundred years, we <laughs> ridiculous like bunny rabbit thing. Yeah. So I kept putting in wars and then branching humans and putting humans somewhere else and having another you know. Mm -hmm. that, and and what happened was I ended up going. I wonder what the story is behind that. That's got to be a story, right? Yeah. There's going to be why did this these two people decide to have a war. There's going to be a yeah, story. I think there. we were talking on it. It was uh, us going to Mars was the concept. Yeah. because of us overpopulating earth right and we that's how we got into it because i remember you were like no we're still gonna re we're still gonna overpopulate it doesn't matter how slow we go we're still we're already set up to re over repopulate it this is why oh, yeah. the, the space programs and that that are happening right now are actually kind of actually really important because once we finally hit that number we got to do something to bring down the numbers here well by 2100 we're going to be at 25 billion people. Yeah. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And like with everything that like 
just take this last year into account of everything that we have had happen. All those forest fires at that time yeah. that were literally like that, just all that's killing our, our greenery, which mm -hmm. is what creates uh, oxygen for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more oxygen that we start consuming and all that stuff, like it's going to happen. Like, there's going to be so much stuff that we're taking away a lot of natural resources that we're not realizing. We really but at the are. same time, like there is a reason why we have like loggers and things like that as well in those areas they're supposed to be cutting down trees so we don't have those mass spread forest fires but yeah. it's also like some of those areas too are still in droughts yeah too like i think There's california finally got out of its drought like a few years ago and yeah. the oh my god during the pandemic those pictures that came from california were crazy the pollution dis de uh depletion mm -hmm. did you see those yeah I was well, really I mean, impressed. I was like, after a month of like nobody doing the regular stuff, like the pollution in LA was like, I was like, wait, LA has a blue sky. <laughs> right. Like, well, we did the same thing. I mean, we put in uh, like super hard EPA requirements in the, in the eighties. I remember as a kid, you couldn't see downtown. Yeah. Around here. I live, I've, I've lived in Arvada all of my life. And I remember in the 80s, you couldn't see downtown. It was just remember, shrouded in brown. Yeah. On occasion, we still kind of get that like smoggy look over us on occasion. Yeah, but it was, it's. I not, saw it very heavily when everybody was actually back out in the world. Yeah. Because like, I was, I was still working during the whole pandemic in mm -hmm. at the hotel and during graveyards. So driving around when there was nobody on the roads, which was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, oh, this is what Colorado driving's like. I remember this driving. It right. was fine. But like uh, the skies were so blue every morning mm -hmm. and every night, like when I was going into work, like everything was so clear. I was like, this is amazing. Like I haven't seen Colorado day. in this point since I was a child. Right. And now yeah. like I'm looking at it now, like after everything opened back up, like I could start seeing the brown clouds coming back, the smog. Like I was like, oh, okay, yeah. But There's but even moving. then, that is a fraction. Nothing of what it was. In oh, the, I've seen pictures, and I know what you're 80s, talking about, oh, man. And 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 we didn't even think about it. And here we were just breathing that. Yeah. You know, and I didn't even think about it. Mom didn't think about it. Dad didn't think about it. Nobody thought about it. Now we all do. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's. That's one of those things. Um, but, you know, my, my son's right now in the middle of learning about, you know, planetary history and stuff like that. And he's talking, he was talking about the Cambrian die out. And I was like, well, yeah, but because everything was carbon dioxide and then yeah, yeah, these yeah. plants grew and the plants created oxygen and then couldn't breathe it. So they died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like, well, that seems stupid. I'm like, well, we learned. I mean, the system learned. We invented animals at that point in time, which breathed oxygen and gave off carbon dioxide. And then we got balance. And he's yeah. like, oh, OK. And I'm like, but, you know, we can tip that at any time. Mars did. Mars once had an oxygen atmosphere. And I mean, lost had, it. had water. But I mean, there's those ice caps. Yeah. And then they lost it. We actually sent a probe over there to find out all about that. That's what Maven does. Yeah. Maven's entire job. And the thing is that carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen. Yep. So if you have carbon dioxide and oxygen in your room, the carbon dioxide is going to fall to the bottom and the oxygen will go to the top. Well, imagine that in this, in this, in the atmosphere, what'll happen. Right. Now, all you need is six feet of carbon dioxide and nobody can breathe anymore. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh -huh. it. Cause it'll all fall to the bottom and push all the oxygen up. There's a reason why we're worried about CO2. Too much CO2 is next. actually not great for like too much CO2 is bad. I mean, that's the same concept for when you're um, in an air bubble. Like, yeah. Let's say you're underwater, you're in an air bubble and you only have this amount of hours left before your body starts getting CO2 poisoning mm -hmm. because of all the carbon dioxide that you're releasing and replacing with the oxygen. Right. And exactly. that's why they only give you like a certain amount of like days or hours, depending on how big of a bubble it is. Yeah. Cause I remember I was watching this thing that randomly popped up on Facebook, actually, that I was actually kind of, I was, it was a, 
a guy at sea, he was part of this crew and he was the only last survivor, but they found him like four days later and he was trapped underwater for four days. Mm -hmm. And he only thought he was under there for two. Because he didn't remember the other two. It wasn't even just remember. He was in complete darkness for four right. days that yeah. you, you lose, you lose time and everything. And he's like, I thought I was only down there for like two days. And they're like, no, you've been gone for like four to six days. Like literally you should be dead. Yeah. And all the things that they had to do to him during those, like that whole year, just because of his body, just for those four days, destroyed his body for a year. Oh, that yeah. where he was not able to do a lot of things for almost a year, but and that's due to the CO two and mm -hmm. like being under all that uh, all the pressure of the water because even if you're in a bubble, you're still thousands of miles below like sea level, which there's a lot more pressure down there. Yeah, yeah, and <clears throat> it's so crazy all the different things that happen to bodies. Like human, the human body is just so is so crazy <laughs> it really is it's i it's love learning about random stuff to like me this, the though. human body is always amazing to me it's but amazing I think it's what you can go over. through like mm. doing the whole martial arts thing and all that stuff like and rock climbing specifically rock climbing really throws me off on like it really shows you what the human body can go through in extents of people not realizing that like there was rocks that i was grabbing literally like this and holding my body up against a wall right because of what i was able to build up and actually make my body do or just knowing how to like wedge your body just right and use exactly it. it's Legend. it's crazy like it's just some some of the things that we do as humans like we put our bodies to the limits and yeah. being able to realize like the human body can do that is still kind of dramatic like kind of cool to think of like what you're able to do. And I see people doing this even like in ages where I'm like, most people say like, you're not a, you're not supposed to be able to do that, mm -hmm. but you're in your fifties and you're still doing it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also at the same time, I asked was like, what kind of repercussions are you getting out of that too? Cause mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious, like, cause with age, like you do like when everybody's like, Oh, I'm not in my twenties anymore. I'm feeling it. Or I'm not in my thirties because they feel the difference. Of what they're used yeah. to. But also like even keeping it like there's some people I know that like they, they keep up that physique all the way through it and they're still like, No, I still feel the difference now than what I did then. Yeah. When I was able yeah. to still do this. And it, it, I mean, even it, it, even I'm noticing now I've spent a year pretty much sitting here in this chair. Yeah. For COVID, because we just haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm now starting to move again and get out and get to my martial arts classes and stuff like that. It's hard. Things cramp now. Yeah. I mean, like everything's cramping up. Um, I, I, it's, oh, it's brutal. It is brutal. Oh, yeah. So, but you know, I can feel here. it. And it's just one year. We just mm -hmm. spent one year down. I mean, that was the same thing with like working as a night auditor for a hotel. Like, yeah, I would literally, Every day I'd be still sitting in this chair doing my thing, school and artwork. And then um, at night I would be sitting in another chair, just working a front desk and doing all that. And I would move around more over there because I had to go like walk around the hotel and make, make sure, sure the doors okay. were closed. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But still like, even in that sense though, like I really wasn't moving that much that I'm used to. And then now like I work for FedEx and I move around You're a lot. Always. I'm always all over the place, but yeah, I'm still sitting, driving around, but like, sure. I'm still getting up. I'm throwing boxes. I'm moving back and forth, but like, I'm at least being the active that I'm used to. Right. And it took me about a good, like a few weeks to get my body back to, I want to say acclimated back to that routine right? right and being right. back in that actual movement. And I actually feel better now that I was able to actually start moving around again instead cool. of just sitting around like I usually do now, yeah. but it definitely does throw a toll on your body. You definitely feel it. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we've gone 15 over. So. I know. I saw that. <laughs> I actually, I, I, I have a, I teach kids in the afternoon. Okay. I teach them art. Yeah. And so I got to rock and roll because they're over in central time. And so okay. I've got, I've only got a few minutes for lunch. So I'm going to 
head on over and do that. Thank you for joining me today. Anytime. I appreciate it. We didn't get any painting done, but you know what? I enjoyed our discussion. I always enjoy the discussions. Yeah. I actually had everything up and I was like, oh, right, I'll start working on some stuff. I'll and then start, I was yeah, like, I've been sitting here thinking, so fun. I'll work on this. And then I didn't because yeah. this is much more interesting to me. So sometimes you just need that. Like, hey, I mean, it, one, it's your channel, but two, it's also like sometimes like these channels, like I've watched them for what, a few months now. Like, there's those days like, I'm going to get all this done. And then like you and Pepper go off on this tangent. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, uh, yeah. We used to do this all the time, and that's the part I always liked about these art get-togethers, though, was that you would always have a set of stuff that you wanted to do, and you still got to them by that night, but we would always be working and talking, or yeah. we would go on tangents for a few hours and then be like, all right, now we're actually going to work and talk. <laughs> right. Well, but, uh, sometimes we'd come in and we'd be like, well, we got to do this. I've got to do this huge project or whatever, and I'm going, you know, okay, well, then we'll leave you alone and we'll talk over here, you know. Yeah, sometimes that happens. But still, it's that environment of working around people that are actually doing something too, which actually makes it so much easier to do sometimes. Of being like, I can't work by myself today. I just need more background noise and right. hearing people talking about things that I'm interested in, or even things that are coming into what we're doing. Yeah, I I need it usually just to keep me off of Facebook. That's generally yeah. what happens is because if I'm around all of you guys, I feel really guilty getting on Facebook and yelling at people. But that's but here by myself, nobody's here to stop me from getting on Facebook. And I oh, that's so rough. No, I, I don't. No. And, and the problem is, of course, we need Facebook to do our jobs. So there's nothing we can do about it. It's got to still be media is a thing. Like yeah. everybody always asks me, is like, why are you still using Facebook? I'm like, because it's where most of the people that actually like look at my stuff are at. So I kind of have to still use it. I'm sorry. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things. It's like I hear a lot of people saying we should get rid of Facebook, but I don't hear anybody saying what we should get rid of it for. Yeah. And it, and it, all they really want is just us to go back to mailing letters to each other, I guess. I don't know. But whatever's the story, without Facebook, there's no way to keep in touch. And so And all those algorithms are going to go over to a different social media platform. Yeah, so it, it won't matter, matter what it's social gonna, media. It's going to it's going to recycle. It's how it works. Yeah, you just have to be smarter than the social media platform. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay. Well, All thank right. you for joining well, me today. I'll let and you go so you can get to I need get food. some food. I need food. So I will I'll probably I'll give you a holler on Friday if you want to join us for our Friday yeah. meeting. So, yeah, you'll probably catch me like usual where I'm just waking up and yep. be like, Hey, you want to join? I'm like, Yep, give me five minutes sure. of coffee. Yeah, I need coffee in my square cup. So <laughs> thanks, hey. man. It is a cool cup, though, to be fair. <laughs> I'll see you later. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.